Hello, YouTube. Hello. Hello, guys. How's it going? Oh, look at this. It feels like we're what in a, a split screen. The split screen feels That's like we're in two different it? places. Oh. Yeah. Nice Hello, anyway. Nice t shirts. Yeah. Look at us matching. We should sell these. Matching t shirts. Uh, so, yeah. Give us a shout if you're out there just to make sure everyone can hear us and stuff. I can see some green bars moving around and, and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much all for joining us on this. Um, what is this? Pretty good Thursday drink along. Pretty good Thursday. The bank holiday starts now. Paul, have you broke up for Easter? I have. I broke up about nine o'clock this morning. Fantastic. Yeah. I haven't worked this week, so I broke up on last Friday. Yeah, yeah. but you've been to Peppa Pig World mm. or Peppa Pig Land. I have been to Peppa Pig World. Yeah. I mean, you I, didn't have to go. I had a mate who recommended it, um, Boris Johnson. He said it was he said it was well worth a trip. Ah, and not Dave Cameron. Sure enough, it was. You know, actually, I've got a shout out to Pepper Pig World if you're listening. Um, it was actually really good. Okay. What is it? Well, it's it's part of a, a wider theme park called Poulton's Park down near Southampton. And um, yeah, essentially, they've just got a little section of the park, which mm. is quite a big section of the park where they've just turned it into a, a Pepper Pig cash cow. Or cash pig, cash pig, cash yeah. pig. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It was it was very nice. May have had a great time. It was a third birthday, so evening, Seabus. Evening, Seabus. Luke, Luke's on. Oh, hi, Luke. Hello, Luke. Hope your Amazon podcasting went well this week. Amazon, uh, as in podcasting for Amazon. The, the Amazon, big time. Sounded amazing. You got the big clients now. Yeah. Don't forget about us. Luke. Big Ev, there he is. Big Ev. Carl Taylor. Hi, Carl. Carl. We'll be having Carl in... Uh, Pardon? <laughs> Carl on toast. Uh, we'll be having Carl in a couple of weeks. Yes. We? Yeah, we're doing a bit of filming for Beer Boot Camp, so that'll be a really fun video. talk a little bit about that without giving the, the game away. Yeah, later, so maybe. Carl is going to be the... Uh, what would it be? I suppose the alter ego, or the second version of Johnny Macro. Yeah. And here is the man himself. <laughs> Here he is. Johnny so, Macro. for those for those in the chat, um, Jonathan Hinks is Johnny Macro. So it's Johnny Macro's um, alter ego. I mean, Johnny Macro is his real name. Jonathan Hinks is his superhero name. Yeah, so that's how I understand it. Probably, I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, but um, yeah, he couldn't be with us tonight in person because uh, he, he's got work tomorrow. Yeah. So. You Drive, might, driving the rigs. Drive, driving some big, heavy lorries. So uh, he, he might not be around all night, but he will be around for the beer which we've picked for him. So as you guys all know, um, this drink along was themed around four beers, and we decided to do this based on um, four catchphrases that we kind of came up with off the cuff. So, But we have got five beers. we got five beers. So... I did bonus. In partnership with our, uh, our friends at the Hot Vaults, our local tap room, um, we worked together to try and basically put together the best possible value that we can um, with regards to beers. Now, I know that for a lot of people, it was probably a bit of a hard sell because people, you likes of our other sponsor, Bruiser, mm -hmm. and um, another one which does songs like Rock Lobster, B-52, uh, they've saturated the market so that 30 quid actually can get you about eight beers if yeah. you buy through them. But eight shit beers. <laughs> not on Bruiser, though. Not on, not, we, not we on should Bruiser, caveat, obviously. We should caveat that before we immediately... Don't want to alienate our yeah. sponsors. Yeah. But. Um, but hopefully what you guys will be assured of is that what you've spent your money on tonight, if you have indeed bought the box, is you've helped out a bottle shop that's on the high street um, independent and they they're great if you're ever in Stourbridge swing by um, and there's a little discount code that's going to be exclusive to this drink along tonight which we'll do we'll drop it at the end at some point or in the middle or... in the middle I'll drop it in the middle at some drop, point. drop some details on that um, so just to go through then while we just sort of wait for people to file in although I'm pretty sure everyone who's here is going to be here um, so we're starting off with the bonus beer which is Twisted Barrel, Sin, Sin Qua Non. Sin Qua Non. So that's a session IPA. 
Then we're going to go with our, our first catchphrase, which is Johnny Macro would love this one. Mm. So we've gone for the Siren Times 11 anniversary. Hell yes. 11th anniversary, funnily enough. 11th yeah. anniversary. That, that's, yeah. very, that's very current and topical. So good days. Our next phrase, which was not sure about this one. Mm -hmm. Now, this one is actually quite difficult because we realized after we'd already put out a video advertising the four phrases that we're going to be picking the beers for. The whole point of not sure about this one was supposed to be, <laughs> um, this could be a bit shit. <laughs> but then when we're asking people to spend some money, it's like, oh, yeah, get four beers. One of them you may just find disgusting and shit. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's not the best selling so, point. So it wasn't it, the best selling point. Uh, so we, we went through different options of trying to find the right beer for it. Uh, we had cereal milk IPAs on the list. Um, we had a brown ale, a U.S. A brown, brown ale. ale. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we've settled on uh, Good Chemistry uh, Brewing, who are a brewer from Bristol. You'll find out more about those later. Uh, and a collaboration with a hot breeding company called Bart Bart House X. You never know how to say that. It's Bart Bart House. Bart House. Bart Haas. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's quite interesting. It's got a lot of talking points that one. So look forward to dipping into that one. Then we are going on to Glasshouse Pentracore. So Glasshouse are one of our favourite local breweries. Um, when we saw that they had a new dipper out, we were going to throw in a nothing bound can, weren't we? We were going to do like an IPA nothing bound, but I feel like we've done those to death a little bit. Yeah, and when we saw that Glasshouse had another dipper, we we're like, come on, we need a dipper. Yeah, and of course the uh, the crown on the king, so to speak, what? is the uh, the Pohalla Disco Imperial Stout. So Good it's boy. the barrel aged whiskey one, twelve and a half percent. Send you off to bed nicely. Put hairs on your chest. Yes. So, so while we're here, I suppose we're gonna uh, we're gonna finish what we're drinking, and we will get stuck into the twisted barrel synchronon if you haven't already. Yep. So we've just been, well, I guess, preloading as they, the kids used to call it, with um, an overtone West Coast, which was fucking brilliant, by the way. Because overtone are quickly becoming my favourite brewery for sure in the UK. So twisted barrel. I've always had to double check how to say this, but yeah, it's Sidi Qua Non, which is not Spanish. <laughs> like we no, we thought, I thought it was Spanish. Like a, yeah. a couple of idiots, uneducated fools that we are. Turns out it's Latin, yeah, and it's it, Latin. it stands for, or it means, um, something that's vitally important, I think. I've, I've lost my notes. Um, We've got two of these. Why are we sharing? A, a thing that's absolutely necessary. So, so twist, Twisted Barrel, though, let's just give them a, a bit of a shout out, because they were a... A guest which we didn't know we'd have on here, but they're from Coventry. So it was quite nice knowing that we could feature a, another local brewery because obviously we knew we were going to get Glasshouse on. But to have another one on, which I would say you don't see a lot of Twisted Barrel. You don't even see much around our neck of the woods. I mean, so Co Coventry is local, yeah. as in it's a couple of counties down. But who the but fuck wants to go there? Still a trek from here yeah. to get there. Uh, yeah, also, well, two reasons you want, you want to get to Coventry. One, Twisted Barrel. Look at that on the screen. Oh, wow. It's like some weird lens flare. Ooh, nice. Okay. <clears throat> That's pretty cool. It's like uh, fucking uh, J.J. Abrams directing. Every film he's ever done. <laughs> Every shot he's ever, <laughs> ever filmed. Um, so Twisted Barrel, really great little tap room. And the, the, beer, the beer fresh from the tap down there, and I haven't been for a couple of years, to be fair, but when I went, it was fucking brilliant. But also, there's a cracking little place in Coventry called Beer Gonzo, which is a tap room and bottle shop who specialise in Belgian um, bottle speciality beers, really. So, lots of lambic. You keep threatening me with a minibus trip uh, uh, from the hot Yeah, bottle. I keep threatening <clears throat> everyone with a trip down there because they've got a cheese and meat counter now. Oh. So, you can sit there and eat platters of meat and cheese. And Would you like to join meat. us on our trip to Beer Gonzo? Let us know. In the in the comments, everyone's very quiet at the moment. So it's... Well, we've got to get the beers down. Got yeah, it's, no, it's, what, what should we be getting off this? It's half past well, twenty to eight on a Thursday. People aren't really in to the wrong, ladies getting... and gents. Yeah, to the wrong. I'm I'm not getting a lot. 
I mean, so what should we be getting? Well, let's put some context around this, though, right? So it's, it's a session IPA. So I always question session IPA. It's a pale ale. Mm. Let's be honest. So four point five percent. So we're not expecting anything major. But this is our little welcome drink. This is our before, pre-dinner conversation. Get get uh, settled in. So this is a pale ale. Well, this is a West Coast session. I, I, I guess I can see it's the West Coast. Um. Yours is in there, Hannah. <laughs> we got Hannah one as well. We got Hannah, Hannah one's walking around the back, um, stealing all the beer. Um, so it's a session. I session pale ale. Uh, it's a West Coast style. It looks and smells westy. Not particularly clear though. No, so I'd say that this is very much a um, like a, a pale that kind of crosses the the paths of. Mm. It's not quite a New England pale. It's not. A, it's not really a West Coast, but it's 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 an American pale ale, I guess. You could yeah. Say. So there's two hops in here. We've got Azaka and Magnum. So I'm, I'm guessing Azaka is going to be aroma, and Magnum's going to be. At this point, I'm bittering. sipping. Are you, are you sipping? I haven't even had a try. No, yet. you've been talking. Um, so Big Ev and Jonathan Hinks kept me in. They're in. Um, Cam said, "All my favourite things in the world: cheese and meat and beers." Oh, doing well. There you go. Unless so, you're a vegetarian, I'm surprised actually, Cam. That I mean, forgive me if I'm wrong, Brad. I haven't actually seen Beer Gonzo pop up on uh, on your YouTube channel yet. Um, Get down. Oh, we got Jake Keeley right there. Oh, well, I couldn't get the capture card working in the end, Jake. So we're just uh, we're just we're not um, here for your conversations, anyway, boys. Yes. And C Bass, great. Great box, few breweries I don't usually drink, so looking forward to them. Yeah, so yeah. You don't, you don't say so you don't see much twisted barrel around. I think since they did, did this rebrand, which is quite a radical departure from their original yes. branding. Yeah, if you yeah. Can remember that. It's you seem to see a little bit more. Maybe it's a little bit um, more user friendly from the shelf. You know, but there's, there's something quite lagery about it. But it, it ah, is a thing. So the secondary hop in here, which again I think is for bitterness, is Magnum. Magnum is a descendant of Halatau. Okay. So a lager hop. So Halatau is a region in Germany that grows a lot of hops. Well, hops that you get, the hops <laughs> called, that you get in lager. Called Halatau from it. Yeah, Halatau, yeah. Mittelfru and all that sort of stuff. So this is, this is a, a more bitter descendant of a lager hop. Actually. I'm getting that. What, what's everyone think in the comments, everyone who's drinking this at the moment, what's, uh, what's the vibe? It's very subtle, I think. It's it's very dry. I think the key for me is session IPA, and I could once I get past the initial bitterness, I reckon I could session this. Oh, easy! But it it it, it feels like it's a West Coast in terms of bitterness, but it's trying to be a lager in terms of easy drinking. Yeah, dryness. It's, it's, it's a nice crossover. Yeah, but I'm not. Sure. I could drink it. I'm not sure that that's a thing that works, but that's just me. Mersey Beers. Good evening. Sorry about the suspicious comment on the community tab. I'm drinking along with my own drinking Mind Flayer from Mortalis. Good Lord, man. Well, firstly, thank you for joining us, dude. Uh, and not at all, don't, don't, don't worry about the, uh, <laughs> the comment that you put on there. It was a very valid, very valid point. And we need to. This is the first one that we've done. So we need that kind of well, we'll uh, talk that, about that, that feedback we'll, going forward yeah. about. Obviously, I, I did say at the beginning, you know, we know that thirty pound for um, four beers, which has turned out to be five. We know it's a it's a bit of a steep ask when you don't know what's going in it. But equally, I suppose we'd ask you to join us in the 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 mystery or the adventure that is the mystery of it all. Yeah, because you know, I, mean, I mean, I think we, we, you know, I'm from the industry anyway, so I know I kind of knew the pitfalls about this, and I think Chris, you were. Fair to say, a little bit naive about things like postage and packing in terms of costs, right? Well, I thought it was like a like two quid. Yeah, <laughs> so like, oh, cost two when, quid. when you put these things together, you have to consider not just the beer uh, and the quality of the things you put because you want to put some, you know, some absolute big monsters in there, and you want to put some more sessiony things, and you want a, a spectrum of styles. But you've really got to consider the postage, which is. Fucking ridiculous nowadays. Yeah. I mean, well, you said it's gone up since you've been out the game now for not quite a year. Yeah, but you said it's it's gone up even since then. I, I think 
if you look at the, the it's tiered as well so the more parcels you send out as a business you, you know you achieve that you get through different um logistic firms but you know you're looking about 12 quid yeah, yeah just for postage and packing nowadays it's crazy well that that was the thing i mean not to get too bogged down at the moment in the uh, the, the long grass that is putting together a, a drink along box but um but that was one of the things that when we first had the initial discussions with mark it was like 30 quid will get us around four beers. Mm. But then postage is going to be seven quid yeah. at 30 pound. And we're like, fuck. So you're basically asking people to pay, if they're only buying that that amount, 37 quid for four maybe, beers. Maybe 40 quid. And like I say, when yeah. when I know I can harass certain people to, to, to jump in on the box, and <laughs> thankfully some of these guys are here. Um, but to some of our audience that watch us, don't know no, us yeah. in person, are they going to join us in on that deal when, like I said, you can get a Bruiser or Beer 52 or Beer Dad or something like that, and you can get, like, eight beers for that? It's all. It's also really tricky as well because if you had the likes of, you know, the bigger beer YouTube channels, who we won't mention this evening, but, you know, we know who you are, um, the, then they get the luxury of working with breweries for ages to plan the deliveries, know exactly what's going into the boxes. They can they can schedule themselves to go along with their brewing. You know, yeah. And they know what's going to end up in the box. But from our point of view, what we want to do is work with our local bottle shop. Most bottle shops don't know what's going on in the corner, you know, until two weeks, until it lands on the shelf. So we kind of had to keep it a little bit vague because we you know we wanted to find the best beers we could. At the well time. that was that was it. I suppose as well a lot of it depended on how many people bought the box. Depending on how many bought it would determine what we threw in because it would depend very much. We knew that we couldn't take all of Hot Vault's stock. So, you know, <laughs> they only buy in maybe some beers, they'll only buy 12, 12 cans of. So if we get 12 people who are buying the box and we want to throw that beer in, Hot Vault would be like, well, no, you can't put that in because we've got none for the shop. So they then have to take the jump on going up to 24 cans rather than 12. So, yeah, it's it's just... It's the reality of small business. Yeah, and I suppose it doesn't also help that I basically decided this is what I wanted to do. <laughs> There's um, no stopping you. The, yeah, and it well, left us very little time to do it. Yeah. But I was like, no, it's, it's a good happening. time It's a good time to do it because this is the first drink along that we're doing that isn't falling on a Friday. And Friday, you know, is, is one of those days where people are going out, people are doing things. Mm. Thursday, breaking up for the bank holiday weekend, you know, there's still many people doing that, but I think it's more like you've just got back from work, you're feeling fucked, and you're ready for a beer, and you're perhaps going out tomorrow or Saturday. So oh, I am. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just getting some thoughts on this. So we've got uh, E&E said, uh, subtly lagery, but good, very sessionable. Uh, Seabass said, defo getting the lager vibe as mentioned. And to another point, Mersey Beer's, I uh, said postage is mental. Usually have three local friends that we club together to make large orders to reach a higher threshold for the yeah. delivery. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you're typically looking about forty quid minimum order for you know from from breweries, fifty quid sometimes. You know. So, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that was the whole reason just throwing that ten percent discount yeah. code because we know that it was the perfect storm of we're approaching Easter, approaching the bank holiday. Fill up your beer fridges while you can. And so it's an yeah. expensive business and an expensive hobby. This, but it's nice though. I guess. It is. I mean, so. drinking this. I mean, I've got a bit more here. Well, we'll hang on a minute. Will it win beer of the night? Nah, it won't. But what it will win is beer of the start. Of the, <laughs> the, the beer, beer of the twenty-two eight. It's the best beer that I've had between the. No, it isn't. Hours of half seven and eight o'clock. It's a it's a decent little session. I could I could drink a few of those quite happily. Mm. But yeah, they do have a um as I've just told some quick more uh so they were formed 29th of March 2014, Twisted Barrel. Yep. Which means that they're pretty much 10 years old. Which surprised to the me day. actually. Yeah. I've been yeah. to a couple of couple, one. <laughs> I've been to one beer festival at Twisted Barrel back in their tap room, and that was about five years ago. Um it was really good. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, the, 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 tap, the tap room is good, you know, classic industrial tap room chic. <laughs> Evening, Rob. Evening, mate. Um, 
but they had loads of nice street food in situ there, which was nice. I think it was a regular thing. Again, I haven't been for a while. Um, but the beer was great that day. And they had some really great guest beers. I think that was a, one of the first times I tried Glass House. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Um, they were just kicking off around that time. So, yeah, great. Cool. We've got a brief pause there, which means we should probably... I mean, we are due to, to go on to the Siren Lager. 8 o'clock, but I mean, depending on how people are doing for beers, because I know the first one tends to go pretty quick. Pretty quick. We've spaced these out, just so you guys know, we've spaced these out as uh, every half an hour. So we're going to do the lager at 8, the good chemistry at half 8, whoops, um, the dipper at, where are we at now? 9, and then at half 9, we're going to have the pohala. There's absolutely no way on this earth we're going to keep to that schedule. No, it's, it's, it, it ends up being We're going to speed run it, you know this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, because, I mean, when I sent the time to Paul earlier, it was like, we usually average around 20 minutes for, for a drink. We so, can't. But we'll see, because I suppose we've got a... I don't know how many people are drinking solo cans. Who Who's out there drinking a solo can tonight, or who's sharing? Who's doing the old bottle share, or who's doing a... Uh... I'll just keep checking out my hair in the camera. It looks amazing tonight. Well done. Well just... done. Yeah. You've had a haircut recently. Uh, it's a few, yeah, a few, few weeks ago. We share a hairdresser now. We do. We've got a stylist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's called hey. Aidan Maguire. Okay, so uh, Mosey Beers has got the glass house dipper. Great. We've got Legend Steve. Legend Steve's in, riding solo. You're a legend, Steve. Mr. Power of the Steve Power Power Hour. Yes, yeah, so if, if you guys listen to the podcast, you'll know that we have a... Um, a section which is all about the uh, well, the bad news that's in the beer and brewing world, which is frequent, which is frequent. So, there's yeah. plenty of it. And we originally called it the misery corner. Uh, and then my mate Steve, Steve Power, he said, Oh, you missed a trick not calling it the doom bar. So, now it's now it's Steve Power's the doom bar, yeah, as, as, a, as a thing. So, Sponsored that's pretty good. By. So, yeah, Mersey's got the glass house dipper. Um, Seabass is riding solo. Big Ev is sharing with my mother. <laughs> None of these are you. No, it's cool. It's, 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 it is actually my mom. It's fine. Um, <laughs> and John, Johnny Macro is riding solo. And same with Rob. Uh, because he's not sure whether his eight year old son is up for it. Well, not that's, with that attitude. That's very yeah. good. <laughs> not with that attitude, as Paul would say. But I think that's a solid choice. Um, yeah, so it's, it's actually really nice. It's it's growing on me. This, this is. I, I think I was a little bit. My, my, my brain was split between the lager and the West Coast. I'm on naked. Uh, there's like a heart emoji in the middle of the uh, uh, at the end of the things of the comments. So like all I can see from what Cam said there is I'm on naked machine super smoothie. <laughs> Again, not a mechanism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that, that's that's not surprising. <laughs> Cam, Cam's an animal. <laughs> Cam, are you in the UK at the moment? Or are you jet setting off around Europe like you usually do? Juicy that is. Uh so it's naked blue machine smoothie. There we go. Well let's do say another back, comment. Back in Liverpool. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, beer guide worldwide. Head over to his uh his channel if you like beer vlogs because he he gets about like a yeast infection. <laughs> and he's, yeah, he's, he's got got back on Tuesday from Barcelona. So basically, if you if you're ever thinking, is there a good place for me to go in Barcelona, Prague, Albania? Mm. Cam has probably done a video from Hull. there. Yeah, <laughs> Hull. Uh, yeah, he's, he's probably done a video from there showing some of the the sites and stuff. So it's it's all very helpful. It right? is. Good. It's good stuff. Right then, it is now five to eight, so I reckon we tee up the next beer, which is the Siren times 11. Is it lager time? It's lager time. It I'm feels a, like I've, I was at lager I'm time. I'm going to get some special glasses. It feels a bit like, I don't know what you guys think, but this feels a bit like craft lagery almost. It's like, you know, in a lot, you know, when a craft brewery does lager and you're like drinking it and going, what the fuck's this? This doesn't taste like a lager. Mm. Or it doesn't look like a lager or anything like that. Yeah, that's that's kind of like what this is. Yeah, for me, I, I 
kind of used to be lager should be open for experimentation, but the, the sort of more the older and more cynical and jaded I get, I tend to think leave it alone. Yeah, leave it alone. I've not had many good craft lagers until recently. You know where I'm going with this. We've had the pleasure of drinking Beaks Desht Lager. Dausch. Dausch. That's how you pronounce it. It's spelt Dest with Desht. some with some things on them. It's got one of those umlauty things, which is an umlaut. On the D and the S, yeah. I think. It's like Desht. Oh, is that how you say yeah. it? Oh, okay. Dausch, Dausch. apparently. Yeah. So um, that was fucking brilliant. It's like a that check. was one of the best lagers I've had in years. Yeah, we're drinking that. Some, some of the boys that are on tonight... Um, they came over to the hot vault on Sunday and they picked up their boxes. Mm -hmm. You saw them. I did. And yeah, they they were hitting the dash, dash. Um Mersey beers. Most breweries shouldn't do a lager if that. they can't use log, log yeast or I'm, cold I'm very much of that mindset nowadays. Yeah. Absolutely. Stop buggering around with it. It's a classic for a reason. Oh, my mom's replied or said something. Evening, dudes. <laughs> Crack open the second. The first was a bit bitter, but not unpleasant. Well, there you go. Well, that's, that's something to put on top. Tasting notes from your mother. Well, not your mother. It's... My mum would only join this if it was a white wine. So we need to if get, it was a Pinot get... Noir. No, My Pinot... parents show up. Where are yours? They'd be drinking Pinot Grigio. My dad will be in the bathrooms drinking bitter. <laughs> My kind of guy. Right then, let's crack open beer number two. I'm going to use these um, Pilsner Urkel, not no. Pilsner Urkel style. Are we going to hard pour mm. this? Or yes. are we just going to? Are we going to Ooh. I mean, when you share it, it's a bit hard to hard pour. But shut the camera. That's it, son. That's it. Give us a. Give us one of those heads. Let's see. If... Oh, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, oh, I, had to, I had to say, give us one of those heads because I didn't want to say anything that sounded erotic. Well, luckily, that didn't sound erotic. It sounded fucking creepy. <laughs> it sounded more Jeffrey Dahmer than, uh, I don't know. You're trying to think of a sexy Jeffrey? I, I was gonna... <laughs> Harvey get Weinstein. Away. Harvey Weinstein. Let's just go with that. Uh, yeah. So, Hellas, for me, which basically means, uh, I think it means light in German. Oh, yes, well. Hellas. Indeed. Um, this one is, it, it's basically the a really light lager, which... It's one of my favourites. I have to say, Heller's Lager is just... Oh, I'm more of a Pilsner man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, this is the thing, because I think that when we go into tap rooms and bottle shops and you get the whole Pilsner thing, people see Pilsner. Well, people as in your Johnny Macros who are basically out for a good time. They don't always. They don't. Yeah. They're out for a good time. They don't know craft beer. They just they've just got an open mind. They're ready to love it, mm -hmm. but they know what they're like. And if they see pilsner, they're going to have something very specific in their mind about what a pilsner is. But the problem is with what breweries like Carlsberg have done is they've changed the public perception on what a pilsner is. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not a Carlsberg Danish pilsner that, that you you're trying there. That doesn't taste anything like an actual pilsner. So when you get craft breweries that do pilsner, that is pilsner proper, mm -hmm. people, you Johnny Macros or people of that type, try it and go, "What the fuck's that?" Mm. Which I can understand because unless you've proper gone full ball into German lagers or pilsners, Czech lager, into Czech lager and gone, yeah, I get that. I get that it could be a bit of a nasty surprise because even for me, I think Pilsner's a bit aggressive sometimes. Do you think? Um, may, may, maybe it is, yeah, but um, I, I kind of prefer the almost lemony crispness of a Pilsner. It depends what day it is, I suppose. Yeah. So. Um, Catch up. Just catching up in the comments. So Stephen Power, Legend Steve, said, late on the chat because my mom phoned, but being here, she went away when I showed showed her you were on the telly. She's probably <laughs> channel hopping trying to find you now. She can find us on Channel 4. <laughs> um, my mother said, sweaty socks, the second. So she's she's sniffing it. She's gone in for the wrong call already. Lindsay, you shouldn't be smelling sweaty socks from a lager. So if that's actually true, then sorry would have got some... 
Yeah. Something Questions wrong. Yeah. yeah. Rob said, I'm all about a lovely soft hell is exactly what I think. And Czechoslovakian used. Czech... Is that a reference to the old t- a TV advert, Steve? <laughs> Czechoslovakian <laughs> used. Lee said, give me a bitter as fuck pilsner. I, I take it that means bitter as fuck pilsner, not bitter alcohol free pilsner. Oh, no, that that, that calls my lips. Suck balls. Yeah. Um, Big Ev straight in on it, loving the Times 11. So anyway, let's talk about this beer. Let's talk about Siren. You, yeah, Austin Pills. Austin Pills. I remember, made with Czechoslovakian used. So, oh, think, Siren. Remember, right? Siren are a brewery from Wokingham in... Everyone knows Siren. Royal right Berkshire. Yeah. And they were formed in March 2013. And it just so happens that now is their 11th birthday. And this beer here, Times 11, 11 being their birthday, that's their, uh, well... It's one of their birthday beers. They do also have more out in the set. Um, we didn't do that. No, they've got. We don't want to be a siren showcase. No, I've got no. But that that set looks pretty decent. If you like the big old beers, there's a barley wine. The maiden. Barley Maiden's wine. great. They've done a Deliver birthday a version of that. A, a bottle of it, which is like ten percent, which looks great. There's done a big oat stout. Yeah. They've done a dipper, I think. But yeah, it looks decent. <laughs> Lee said, "No alcohol-free beers." Past the, oh, there's that fucking thing. Oh, no alcohol free beers past these lips. There you go. It's that fucking heart emoji. I'm not going to read any comments out until they've cleared the heart emoji now. Otherwise, I'm missing some serious context. That's the commitment to dialysis that I uh, appreciate. Yes. Um, So, yeah, they obviously, as Paul said, well known for Maiden and all that. They have a tap room and it's on an industrial site. Never been. No, we've not been. But if you like your Westies and you like elusive, I believe that Siren is on the same tap, uh, the same industrial site as Elusive. So you can actually go down to this industrial site in Wokingham and you get two breweries for the price of one. Well, that's not, elusive not good. Not man. necessarily true because you will have to pay it both, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to have got an Elusive beer on for tonight because I'm a massive fan of Westies. Oh, man, I tell you what, the... They re-released um, their Double Oregon Trail a, couple, a month or so back. Yeah. Oh but my God, it was good. Legend Steve actually bought as as well as um, the the drink along pack when mm-hmm. he came to collect on Sunday. He'd also bought all of the uh, Double Oregon Trail beer. So he <sighs> bought the double, the double red, the double black. Didn't try the black. I haven't tried the black. I've tried the red. The red's nice. It's very, or, very caramelly. In fact, I think it's in the fridge. Yeah. But the um, yeah, the, the the double Oregon Trail was just absolutely incredible. Uh, so Seabass said, just checking on the comments. So Seabass said, very decent lager. The dipper from that series, the eleventh birthday dipper, is also very good. If you haven't had it, mm. um, Big Ev is in agreement with Lee about alcohol-free beers. Rob said, I had the Siren birthday stout last night. It was delicious. Yeah. I've got a lot of time for their stouts, I've got to say. And Mersey Beers said, aren't Siren opening a bar in Reading as well? Yes, that actually brings us to another point. Siren are currently crowdfunding for a brewery tap in Reading. They are, yeah. It doesn't doesn't say on the the website how well they're doing, and I couldn't be bothered to click the crowd. No, we're we're not 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 here to... in the signing up to things. We're not here to promote that. No. But, but what we will say is, right. yeah, they they're a good brewery. They've been around for a long time, yeah. Um, and yeah, this is this is a nice beer. So what do we think? It weirdly, I think there was there was an aroma, like your mom said, um, but that, that's dissipated now. I'm getting a bit <clears> of like a lemoniness to that, almost very bready, which you'd expect from a hell's lemon so. bread, maybe. Don't know. That's nice. Got a nice bit of sweetness to it. Yeah. Again. Most um, importantly, though, Johnny Macro put lovely lager up there. Oh, my God. So, obviously, we should also talk about, I suppose, the reason. I mean, this one's pretty self-explanatory. So, with the catchphrases, Johnny Macro would love this one. The whole point of that was we had to give ourselves a criteria of a beer that we knew Johnny Macro would approve of. Mm Mm-hmm. Which made it quite difficult sometimes because we didn't just want to throw in Lost and Grounded because I know he's a he's a he's a Lost and Grounded fan, yeah. and he's, they've always done well when who isn't? 
Exactly. I mean, they, they do it really well. Yeah. There was also Don Zoko. Don Zoko were a bit more, that they basically allocated a bit too much of the budget, didn't they? It was like Don Zoko are great. We would like to go for Big Foam or something of that. Yeah. Look, and it was, it's weirdly expensive. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a great log, but it is expensive. But budget wise, when we're having to, it's kind of like setting up a, <laughs> for those who do fantasy football, it was sort of like <laughs> setting up a fantasy football team. It's like, oh, I've got. I've got Don Zoko in, but I can't, af can't afford to put him in. Otherwise, I need to. Well, we, we wouldn't have been able to afford the the two up front with the Dipper and the uh, and the Imperial Stout. But that would make a really interesting game, actually. Make your own craft beer box or something <laughs> to, a, to, a, to a budget. Yeah, yeah. that would be. That'd you, be quite you, have, you have twenty pounds. <laughs> that that'd be tough. What what do you put in? I don't know. I'd go straight down the co-op and pick up a four, <laughs> a four pack of Beaver Town. Yeah, Ugh, gross. Um, Mersey Beer says the double sunset red trail was really good. I prefer it to the double midnight black. Not, I've not tried the black, and I don't think I've tried the red actually. I think. It's Did you not red. consider something from Utopian? Lee said, "Yes, yes, you, yes." We, we couldn't get uh, we, we uh, hot vault. Didn't have any utopian in I dur during the, the time shelves. that we needed needed to make this box up. I generally haven't seen them on the shelves in many bottle shops for a long time, round by no. us anyway. Um, we used to stock them in in hall, but I remember they were quite hard to get at the time. And then they came like a massive wave of it came, and then yeah. they just disappeared again. I remember but, they I did know. they did quite well in one of the videos. We did a lager video. Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah. I can't remember if it was the Oktoberfest one or the. I think it was the Oktoberfest one, but the Utopian one, and that did quite well. I really rate Utopian. You need to keep talking about Utopian while I go for a piss. I don't need to keep you. Well, but you can talk about whatever. I tell, I tell you what I will do, though. <gasps> <laughs> you were tied up in the leads. Quick. Jesus, I thought we'd lost everything then. <laughs> Are we still on? There we go. Well, we are... Going to do a thing in a few weeks, and I can't remember the date, but it is booked in. Um, I'm not going to give too much away because I think it's going to be a bit of a laugh, but it, it features a couple of our friends who are on here now, um, especially especially the, uh, the the already famous Mr. Macro. We've, we've got someone else we're going to make, hopefully just as famous as Mr. Macro. Um, and we're going to essentially teach... I need to be careful what I say because I don't want to give it away. We're gonna do we're gonna do a top gear star trial to teach a couple of people as best as we can um, to learn about beer within a very small amount of time, and then we're gonna test them on it. Are we still definitely on? We're definitely on. I'm pulling out the power lead from a oh, is that all it was? It was just the laptop power lead. doesn't really do anything. <sighs> Yeah, so that's Fantastic. going to be a right laugh, and that's going to be we're going to film that on a Saturday. It's either going to get very messy or very frustrating, so we'll see. Yeah, it's. I mean, I'm going to enjoy that, and I think we. Yeah. It, it's the long-awaited return of Johnny Macro to the channel, and we're bringing a Johnny Macro. I don't want to say a replica because he's not a replica. He's oh, I just, I just said right? yeah. that there's a potential of the Johnny Macro in the making. Yeah, but we don't have a name for him yet. So if, no, you, if, you, if anyone's got any names for Carl with a K, Kolsch Carl? No, 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 he, does, no does, he doesn't want Kolsch. Um, there, there, there was a name bandied around on Sunday, actually, when I bumped into you in the, uh, in the, <laughs> in the pub, but we're not, I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> Wasn't that the rapist? I, well... <laughs> What did I just say? Oh, what? Well, yeah, yeah, the rapist apparently, but uh, he's not though. That that was just uh, that was an in joke that went too far. He, he, he got pushed too far. Yeah, it was. It's one of those moments, you know, where like Johnny B Tech. Is that what you say? <laughs> Johnny B Tech. <laughs> Johnny Macro and Johnny B Tech. No, my point is about my point is about the rapist thing. It was just like you know, sometimes I like to say things that are very bombastic just to kind of get a get, yeah. get a reaction. Yeah, there's, uh, the, yeah. There's something. There's something knocking around with that. It's got. To, it's got to be a K, hasn't it? So. Caliber Carl. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we'll think about that. But that's going to be a right laugh. Carling. Oh, oh <laughs> my God! Who's that? It's power again. He's, he's the. He's the fucking man. He's, he's the. He's the guy. He's the pun meister. He is. Sensational <laughs> words. But anyway, yeah. Um, I've just been handed some more of this, so that's going in. I mean. 
I'm enjoying it. I don't think it makes. I don't think it would be a German Hellas. Like if this was in the, I don't know what you think, Johnny Macro, but if this was in the uh, Oktoberfest thing up against a German one, as you remember them, I'm not sure it would. We've done a few of these uh, blind tasting things now, and I have to say the lager was the most enjoyable one, and not just because Johnny Macro was on. It's because when we do other blind tastes of other styles, you get fatigued really quickly. The, the pale ale one we, we did, did, well, we did the, just painful. We did the core pails. And how many core pails was it? In oh, there? It was nine. God, it felt like a million. It was nine, and it was, I think by the end of it, we just got, it was just way too sweet. It was just you need this style of sweet beer, and full. I think that was the best way of kind of putting it. By, just, by the just full, full, full. We were, like, we were just like, oh, fucking hell, how many more? And we yeah, wait for it. And I suppose in that in that instance, I mean, we will be doing more of these taste blind tasting, blind taste test things. But as always, just caveated with the fact that if we had those beers in another order, the results would be potentially completely different. Yeah, and I think. Yeah, it was a disaster, I think, for for working out which beer was which, really. We were so confident on some of them. It was a disaster for our public relations, because I think we rated uh, <laughs> we, we rated like Attic and Northern Monk quite low. And, and like... then we had to go and see them the next week. <laughs> Sorry um, about rating your beer so poorly. Well, I mean, but it's, but it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's blind tasting. You, you don't get to decide. Necessarily, it's just it's you're just going with the moment. Aren't well, you? I think we spoke about it before, but it's it, you, you you are so confident when you look at the beer and then you smell it and you have a taste and you go, I can remember that. Yeah. But as soon as one of your senses goes, typically your sight, everything <laughs> just it just it means nothing. It's like you you may as well just be given yeah a, a cup of coffee. You know, it, it you just forget everything. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, well, I think. We don't do uh, we don't do palate cleansers, which we probably should in future. We should like. I remember when I once uh, me and Legend Steve we went to do a paid cider tasting mm. at um, a place in Litchfield, and it was like in the old town hall or something. And we basically got twenty quid. He got paid twenty quid cash, but he just tried six ciders. I think it was six. But basically, he gave you six sides blind. You just had to fill out forms as you drank them. But then in between every one, you had some water and a little cracker. Yes. So it's just like it just like a palate cleanse, which yeah. you had to have before it. And then it gave you instructions as you filled out the, the form, like, now drink the rest of it. Take two sips of the beer. Yeah. What do you think? We well, should definitely do it properly, but we're yeah. barbarians. We're, yeah. we're street urchins. We have no... We have no dignity. We, we're like, yeah, we're, we're we're street urchin punks. We've yeah. got we've got no respect for dig, dignity. Whatever. Anyway, um, he says Saturday's kitchen island. Yeah, doing a podcast. <laughs> Big Ev said the lager gets a four out of five on Untapped, which mm. is as hot, which is as high a lager gets with for me. That's interesting. I've got that. that that's hold beef. that thought. I've that's got, beef right there. That, <laughs> that's lager beef. I'm not standing for it. Ian. No, no, I've been mean, gone. No, 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 no I just, I just wanted to read this because it was quite interesting. Okay. Um, Johnny Macro. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at the one bit. I don't, don't, I caught me. Um, he, he calls you Christian. That throws me. Yeah. I agree with you, Christian. Yeah. Well, you, you call me Christopher about three years. But I'm most, just, most people. I just default most to Chris. Most people call Christopher, you know, yeah. whose name starts with those letters, aren't they? Uh, don't want to take away. Yeah, yeah. It it's it's a it, again. It's a craft version of a very classic style, tweaked deliberately to make it stand out a little bit more. And I'm not convinced that's for the best. No, but then again, why bother doing it if everything's going to taste the same? You know, that's true. How is this lager going down for everyone? Do you reckon we could be ahead of schedule? Because I reckon with with how well it's going, I reckon by twenty past. Mr. Mersey Beers says uh, the core pails video was the video from which I found your channel. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, oh, awesome. That was, that was that's good. I'm, I'm glad our Our suffering was for something. Yeah. <laughs> our drunken sickness was. Uh, it was. I mean, it was, was a good. It's a good filming movie. day. It was great. Yeah. 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 It took tough work for that. Weirdly, the more we've done videos, 
we've actually got worse at it in the sense of we've had two microphone incidents in the last two videos that we've recorded, <laughs> which has never happened before. No. And we didn't even get drunk on them, on the, on the ones that we've just fucked, fucked up on. They were getting cocky. Yeah. Nah. I think when we first started filming, we'd check everything a thousand times and we'd be like unsure of how it was going to turn out, but now we're just getting cocky. So, yeah, we need to uh, My friend have Sam a glass of water and a cracker. My friend Sam in Poland is just sending me pictures of pubs in Poland. Does he, does he not know where I'm telling? Well, I've just sent him a link to it now. So I was going to say... Come on, Sam. Uh, Big Ev. So the logger gets a four, four out of five on untapped for me. So untapped discussion. I know untapped is both a, a curse and a positive um, in this industry. But when you log beers... Do you log it purely out of your in the score you give it? Is it purely from the enjoyment you have when you have the beer, or do you consider the style it's meant to be and how good an example of that style it is? I can, I, I do do the style because I've given alcohol free beers five. Mm. There was a mash gang beer that I gave a five. Not because I thought that was just a five out of star, uh, five out of star, five, <laughs> five star out of beer stars. that that like is the best beer I've ever had, but it's how great is that? Yeah, someone's just caught someone's just joined in. <laughs> but it was just, it was just it's the fact freak, that it's, freak, it's, it's an optical illusion, it's weird. <laughs> but it's the fact that that beer at the time, I was like, okay, this is as far as alcohol free beer, free beers go, this is as good as it gets. Which yeah. means it's got to be a five star and untapped. Because otherwise, what's the point in having a five star rating system for all beers? So, when people have a tin of, a tin, show, show where I'm from, a can of uh, Pilsner Urkel from the co-op, which does happen, hmm. um, and give it three, well, that's not fair, right? Because if we're going to say Pilsner Urkel is arguably one of the best examples of a Pilsner in the world, surely every version of that should be a five. Or there, are we then rating on the way it's kept? So well, yeah, I mean, interesting I think, conversations. Isn't it? There, there is that, but uh, to be fair, the thing about venue, I mean, the, there's the whole thing about whether you should rate a bad beer. That's an interesting. A five star beer should be a beer I could only drink forever. Okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah, what's the what's the trashiest beer that you could drink forever? That's a good question, First, firstly, it? we'll say hello to Josh, who's uh, hey, Josh. last last beer. Um, he said, has anyone tried the Cloudwater Vale Dipper Collab yet, V17? Not yet. It's just coming to the shop, hasn't it? So, yeah, we'll, so I'll, we'll, I'll, I'll pick some up tomorrow, I reckon. Pick some, yeah. And it's going on tap tomorrow. Oh, at, is it? Yep. Yeah, so. Oh, holy shit. So I'll be down there. Um, yeah. Jack Little, hello, man. Um, are you pretending to sit next to each other? I'm confused. Saying, yeah, oh, is that is that the, the the lens flare incident? No, it's the the divide that comes down here. I wish I wasn't. I think that's weird. There we go. If I do that, we literally don't look like we're in the same room. Oh, oh fuck me! You brought the illusion. <laughs> anyway, um, sea bass rates for the style as well. But like you say, um, Mersey beers. Does Cronenberg count as trash? It? Yes, it fucking does, Luke. You should be ashamed of yourself, but no, it's fine. If, if you could drink it forever, happy days. I could drink cheap Aldi lager or some. Well, this this is the thing. I mean, there's, there's there's some beers where you're like, it's shit, but it works and it does what it needs yeah. to. And it's like, uh, you know, you, you, you could have the, like the best barrel aged imperial stout in the world and give it five stars, but you're not going to drink it forever. Are you? In fact, you're going to drink it very. Very few times, only on special occasions, probably. I'm just going to start doing, uh, doing a poll. Next beer. Poll. poll, yeah. Next beer, yes, no. Just to see if people are ready to go again. Here we yes, go. Jack, so, we are very much, well, that's not true from the black country, really, but we're close enough to Birmingham to be classed as it. I'm from Halzone, if that counts. So, Hell's own does count, I think. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's so it's so close to Stalbridge, it's almost painful. Yeah. But I'm right, I'm a, I'm a bastard. The whole, the whole black country thing is just complete bullshit. Like everyone always argues about that. Ha! Ah, yes, you're right. Uh, we've got we've had a note passed to us, which is interesting. My, my, my wife who knows better than 
everyone in, in this room to be just point out the Pilsner Urkel isn't a Pilsner, by the way. <laughs> it's a Czech premium pale lager, and she's absolutely right. So for all of you idiots who thought Pilsner Urkel was a Pilsner, you're wrong, and you can sit in the naughty corner with me. I mean, to be fair, I, I would have... I would have. I'll, I'll be in the naughty corner. I'll yep. bring. I'll bring my chains. And you just ruined everyone's fun here with your boring education. This is what happens. And that's the note, by the way. This is what happens when you have a wife that's doing a Cicerone course. Yeah, Cicerone level two as well. So the proper one, not the the crap one anyone can do, which so, I've done. <laughs> next beer is currently at seventy-five to twenty-five. So I reckon that. Let's do this shit. Let's let's do it. I've got a cold one in the fridge, so let, let me put that back in the fridge while we. I'll put you in the fridge. Uh, let's have a look at what we got in the comments. Uh, Legend Steve said some beer styles will have a cap for me, but there are outliers for every style. Plus, you can't un underestimate the occasion factor. Factor a lager in the airport or on the beach will rate higher than the couch. Yeah, sea bass managed for my own heart. There you go. Yeah, Seba said the Aldi 1079 is my trashy one. Um, Mersey Beers, Hal Owen, it's the land of Lord Roberto. It is. We we live just down the road from his uh, his tap room. Yeah. Well, not tap room, bottle shop. What is it? Tap room. Bar. Bar. Roberto's it's bar. It's bar and tasting club, isn't it? Or is it? It was just called Roberto's Bar now. It's great. Well, me and the boys, uh, John and Carl, we. We love going on bikes uh, when we go to, to London, as some of you all know, if you've heard our podcast, uh, the one, what was it, Scooters to Hooters. We gave, we gave you that story. Um, but after that, when Roberto had opened up his place over here in Hales Owen, I was obsessed with like riding um, riding public, public bikes. <laughs> I just couldn't get enough. Um, so I was looking to see if there was a way that I could get John and Carl over and we could ride bikes from Stourbridge, where we live, or where I live, uh, over to Roberto's in Hal's Owen. Mm. It would have been a few miles, about six, yeah. seven miles, um, but riding around on these bikes would have cost us a lot of money. Mm. But it also would have taken us out of the zones. It's just not London, is it? It's not It's London. not London. It's not border-free. And if you go down the um, the dual carriageway, from Stourbridge to Hells Owen, there's a fine chance that you might die. Well, I was thinking more the other route, the, the back route where you've got all the pubs along the way. <laughs> of course. But then you've got then you're hauling in a Boris bike into a Black Country Ales pub and hanging around with it just so it doesn't get nicked. Second time you mentioned Boris Johnson tonight. I a bit weird. Don't like him. Um but, come on then. Beer. So we're going for the good chemistry Bart Hart spear now. Um, plans to talk about on this one, actually. So good, good chemistry for me are a brewery where I think oh, I haven't had many good chemistry beers, and then I went through one tapped, and I've had loads. I haven't looked, but they're, they're not a brewery that I was familiar with. Um, but yeah, this was interesting in the sense of what we had to do was find a beer that we weren't sure about. So there had to be something about it. That was an interesting little quirk. Yes. And like I say, we, we looked at cereal milk IPAs, we looked at brown ales, we even looked at a Vault City, but then we thought, is throwing a Vault City into the box, isn't that a bit basic bitch? Which kind of really it is. Um, you know, we want to try and throw something in there, which maybe I, I you would put my foot down a little bit. About you did, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but, but essentially. Why this one works is because we looked at it and there's some new hops in it. Well, it's a new collaboration with Bar's House, first and foremost, who yeah. are a, not a huge hop grower, but they're definitely making a name for themselves, I think, because they seem to be popping up and collaborating with loads of breweries this year. Um, that must be by design. I think they're trying to get their name out for sure. Um, so that, that was interesting, first and foremost, we thought. So that's good. But why are Bart House involved, Chris? So Bart House are involved. Essentially, good chemistry brewing, brewery from Bristol. Yes. And there's two of them. There is Bob and Kelly. Two brewers, yeah, but the team's a bit bigger than that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, they were founded in 2015. And their focus is on unfined, unfiltered, 
naturally hazy beers, which is cool because that's what everyone likes to drink now. It's the thing. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that we're looking at on this was it was all about the, the sustainability aspect. So they were after a beer or they're after making a beer that would kind of book the trend a little bit. And this new hop that they were looking at, this Tango, which is a hop which is a cross between Cascade, Cascade and Cascade and Halito. Yeah, it's uh, again, it's by pure coincidence. This wasn't planned because we didn't even know it until earlier. But it's another Halitel based beer, but the hop comes from a Halitel variety. So I was expecting this to be a lot like the first one. We yeah, had. A, bit, a bit more lagery, but it's proper juicy boy actually. But basically, their their brief at the start of it was we're looking at making something that's a bit more sustainable. Obviously. We don't need to. We don't need to go far to look out the window and see how fucking batshit nuts the weather is. I mean, it's like the end of March, nearly April, and it feels like it hasn't stopped raining for the whole year. And like, you compare this month to like back when lockdown was happening four years ago, and the sun that we had then, like how fucking nice that weather was. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just it's fucking crazy. So the the whole point is climate change. It's having a massive impact on the hops as well. That, and that's what you're seeing a lot in brewing. A lot of hops aren't up to quality anymore. There's 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 batches of a lot of hops, Simcoe, and and that especially people have actually observed that it's just not as nice. You know, this this batch isn't as nice as it was last yeah. year. And that's what people are starting to find. And this is all essentially because of um, well, the fact that the the hop grow or the hop harvest has been shit because the planet is dying yeah so what they've decided to do is go and find a hop that mm -hmm. is robust robust resilient to um weather changes it's uh it's also resilient in the sense that it doesn't need as much it's resilient to disease in the sense that it doesn't need mm -hmm. as much pesticide so there's obviously a pesticide element removed as well so this tango hop that they coupled with on with Bartos, they have taken it and they've put it into a beer. They put it into a hazy pail, and they're hoping to make something which tastes probably as nice as some of the more familiar hazies that you're yeah yeah you're sampling on a on any given night. But they're using a hop which is yeah, a bit more climate friendly, I guess. Climate friendly and sustainable hopefully and a little bit more i guess it's that kind of environmental science approach that a lot of brews are, and certainly hop growers are doing now isn't it so yeah um it's called tango i'm assuming because it's german <laughs> it's not because of the uh the fizzy pop of the same name but let's have a ronk or the dance well, maybe, maybe well maybe. it's probably going to be dance you know or the fleetwood Mac tribute i mean I'm not, I'm not getting huge amounts of anything just because of the coldness. I think the coldness kind of kills it a little bit. Well, you're probably going to... What, what, what is Tango meant to be like? Let's let's not second guess this because I'm with you. I'm getting a little bit of muted smell at the moment. Um, tango hops. Here we go. This is so new. Has anyone ever had a Tango hop? Because I don't think I have, not, not knowingly anyway. Good day, Short and Stout. Just going to catch up on the comments while you yeah, have a look at that. that. Uh, so, Jack Little said, favorite Birmingham brewery. Well, hmm. we've got a Birmingham brewery in the lineup tonight, and that's uh, the Glasshouse Dipper, which is coming up next. So, we're big fans of Glasshouse. Not that we'd say that they're our, they're our favorite. I would. Quite happily. I'll, yeah. I'll explain why. I guess they're our favorite. Um, <laughs> My favorite. We're not joining Mer the Oscars. Mer Mersey Beer says in Liverpool you can legally ride a Boris bike through one of the Mersey tunnels, Queensway Tunnel, not Kingsway. Well, it just goes to show that the Queen is easier to go through than the you can King. ride. You can ride a swan through that. Too, yeah, the, and the Queen can't stop you. I think that's what that's right. Yeah. Uh, Big eyed worldwide. So Cam said, "Good chemistry is coming to Bristol Craft Brew Fest this year." Well, yeah, but we go to Birmingham. We're yeah, going to, as, as you know. So, so bring them up here, or <laughs> yeah. let's let's call it quits. Um, Mersey beer—they don't have far to travel. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and yeah, short and stout said hello. Good day. So what are we all thinking on this one? So it looks exactly as I expected, I think. It's got that lovely, it's it's it looks like a hazy pale. It, it certainly smells of sherbet -y kind of that kind of school sweet kind of sweetness. Do you know what I mean? That, yeah. A candy kind of thing. Um, but according to the bar, what, what should we be getting? Because well, I'm according getting to Bar's the the or... official data sheet, which is you know how I get off at night, is um, <laughs> it says dance the fruity tango and let yourself be carried off into a fantastic world of fresh fruit. Yeah. So this is on the aroma, by the way. Tango oh. shows fruity aromas of passion fruit. Don't they all? Grapefruit. Yeah. Resin, resinous note finishing with, with fine lemon and apple. I'm getting apple. Apples, uh, apples are uh, good uh, shape. Isn't it the way? As soon as someone tells you what you, yeah, 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 you yeah, can yeah. smell, you go, oh yeah, that's what I can smell. What so, you can smell is tobacco. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm getting that. Yeah. Mud flaps. Um, Johnny Macro has got his seal of approval. Tastes much better than I was expecting. That's because it's got Halatau hop varietals in it. So it there's, could there's a lager heritage. There's another element to it. Maybe it's because he had such low expectations. <laughs> there's also that. <laughs> that which, which is a callback to my time at Pepper Pig World recently, okay. where uh, I actually had a great time considering what I thought it was going to be like. Because hmm. I just thought it was going to be fucking do you, shit. Do you think they're going to let you back in since the incident? Or? We don't talk about that. Yeah, okay. okay, let's move on. Um, Big Ev said nothing bad about it. Can't get any wrong, really, and taste is unoffensive. I think I'm I'm very much on that side. Of, I'm not getting much on the on the wrong. Or... I'm actually enjoying. Uh, I'm, I'm with you on the wrong. I don't think there's much 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 wrongness going on there. But I think that's really good. I think it's, um, it's really easy easy drinking. It, it's got a really pithy kind of bitterness to it, and it feels easy drinking. And I think it's, it's quite well balanced as well, really. It's a surprise for me. It's a light haze, and I quite like that. It's a surprise for me, for sure. I mean, I don't want to. Um, I don't. I don't want to say anything that would offend good chemistry, because um, obviously the category that this is in is they're not sure about this one. Yeah, well, that's what it was. It's experimental um, hop, right? But yeah, I was I was expecting I, I had kind of like reservations, but that was the reason why it was picked also, you know, because it's like it's it's experimental. So I've got my reservations, but actually it shatters all that. And this is actually a really good beer. The more it sits as well, the drier it feels. I, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean it's like sometimes I get overwhelmed with sweetness. Um with, with some of these beers. It's like more hops means, you know. More, more sugar, more sweetness. You know, we want to get the bitterness out of it, so we're going to oversweet it at the same time, which kind of contradicts what beer should be sometimes. Yeah. So good, good beer and good brewery balances that really, really well. So I think that's, that, that's decent. Is what yep. I'm going to say. I'm enjoying that. <laughs> uh, Jack Little, just checking on the comments. Jack you Little, bet your ass, Jack. Yep. No way. I work at Glasshouse, mate. So that's really nice to hear. Hello, Jack. Um, do you, Jack? Is that is that a full time job or is it... Yeah, so we've got it's Pentracle, we've got so that'll be coming up next. We I mean the story about Josh, that can come later. Oh uh, come stories next. about Josh. Um uh Johnny Macro said I only had high expectations from tonight, Chris. That that's 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 fair. You don't want to let him down. What a lovely man. I hope I hope he's having a good time. Um, Big Ev said, for a five and a half, I'd happily session this. To be fair, this is more sessionable. And I know we shouldn't necessarily compare beers that we are drinking tonight necessarily. But this is more sessionable than the Twisted Barrel session that we started with. Yeah. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a fair comparison necessarily, but meh. But as per usual, I'd love now just to try a bit of that and a bit of this after the fact, just to, just to see, you know. But... Yeah. But I always want that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something that we can never quite do. Um, Mr. B's home brews and beer reviews. Evening, chaps and chat. I'm working through. I'm working through Buxton hop heats, all experimental CF hops, and five cans. And you vote for your favourite. Could be a good life for you, chaps. 
Where, where are you based? Because Buxton were like formative when I started getting to this world. But you don't see them down here again. It's very rarely they come down and it, it, it'll be some big release. Mm. They used to be everywhere in tap rooms, Buxton. Is it because they went to supermarkets? I don't know. Possibly. I don't know. It's a shame because when you get a good Buxton, you get a great Buxton. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I'll change that. When you get a good person, <clears throat> you get a great beer. That's what I should say. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you get a good books and you get a great books. Hey. Not, not sure what that means. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I, know, I, know I, I love mean. the fact you went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I know. You don't I know, have to agree with But no, I, know, I know what you meant. Yes. But yeah, you're yeah, right, actually. When, when, you, yeah. when you dissect that from an English perspective. Beer is being consumed, let's be honest. Yeah, but... Um, be interesting to know what Buxton are up to because last time I had a Buxton, funnily enough, was in Buxton when we went up to uh, Buxton. No, we went up to Thornbridge. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was obviously Buxton. It's just around the corner. So um, had a lot of Buxton. They do some strong old beers on the tap room there. Ooh. Yeah, um, but yeah, they're all, all really, really good. Um, but yeah, you just don't get them in cans down here anymore. It's a shame, really. No, that's the, well, it's a shame. It's one of them. Have we got more of this good chemistry? Because I'm absolutely caning through it. There we go. There we go, son. Get that down. Yeah. This is actually what I feared. We're on. We we jumped. We jumped the shark, didn't we? We jumped early. Speed run. We did a speed run, and now we're on twenty thirty six, and I'm already looking forward to the glass house dipper. Jump some water, which is ahead of schedule, and a cracker. <laughs> I've got crackers. <laughs> to be fair, that's something we should so. do next time. We should do something with uh, beer snacks. We should get everyone yeah. to bring different snacks. Let us know in the comments oh, man. what's oh. working and what isn't. The, the one thing I miss about owning a bottle shop and tap room is the uh, the pickles and the cheeses and the uh, the little bars. Yeah, you used, have, you used oh. to have snacking pickles. I used to really enjoy those. Mm. Um, let's check in on the comments. So, uh, Lee said Buxton Kingslayer is about the only craft beer worth buying in Tesco at present. I'll probably agree with that. Yeah, King, Kingslayer was 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 a good beer. Uh, was that done deliberately for supermarkets, or did that exist in some form before they did that? I can't remember. Did, did, did they do variations of the Slayer? I can't, I'm I'm getting confused. Uh, I'm just looking at my mom's comment there. Buxton are turkeys. You're right, Lindsay. <laughs> You've had enough. <laughs> Buxton are turkeys. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a... But no, Mr. Mr. B's home brews. He's just come back and said he's in Stockport. Not doing all five in one night. It wouldn't be a true picture. I'd be forgetting the first beer, but great to taste these English experimental hops. All New England IPA, 5%, just the hops are different. This is the shit that we like. Yeah. That's what we enjoy. Yeah, good. We we nearly put into the box at one point when we, we didn't really know what direction we were going to. We were talking about ideas. There was a, there was a Brew York beer, and I automatically cringed at Brew York. Oh, yeah. There, there, there's, there's something about Brew York. Might, maybe it's because some of their core beers are, quite frankly, shit. Maybe it's the fact that they're a little bit oversaturated. But just to balance it out before I say what I'm going to say, they do some amazing stouts and they do some that's, really great. Beers. That's the thing, isn't it? That you can say all this about Brew York, and I also agree with it. But then, how is it that they can make such amazing stuff? Like their stout at the moment, the song in the hot fall, mm. is it's, it's incredible. Which one is it? The fucking oh, it's like vanilla cookie. Weird coffee, it's insanely good. chewy loveliness. It, it's great, but, the, but how do they go from that? It's like, like I said to you, they're Barcelona to Barnsley. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you're looking at them from like a football perspective, yeah. like they can do a beer that tastes like it should play for Barcelona. Um, but then another day, well, most of their stuff just tastes like it should play for Barnsley. Light analogy, uh, mm. kind of drifted off towards the end. Uh, but they had a they had a beer which was um, five experimental English hops. No, it was, it was three exper. Uh, well, no, it, and it wasn't experimental. It was just three English hops. Ignore everything I've just said. Yeah, it was so, on the shelf. It was a beer on the shelf. <laughs> it was 
It was an English hops New England IPA, so it was Olicana, Jester, and right. Okay, so okay, so it was, uh, it was Harlequin. It was how to get a decent yeah cra- American style craft beer out of English. Hops, yeah, so yeah. that was gonna pop up in. You don't see these often mm. because the whole idea with that one was uh, you don't see English hops often in craft beer. So that was that was going to be the logic for that. There's um, a reason for that, by the way. They're not very good. <laughs> I mean, there is that, isn't there? And I think that actually is, it's another point. If you guys haven't seen our Thiles video, I thought that when we drank a Thialized IPA from Pipeline, um, the whole point of Thialized beer and Thialized hops is that maybe they can make hops that are more native to the countries that they're grown in, thialize them to give them more of a saturated flavor and taste yep. and aroma. So essentially it's like we wouldn't need to rely so much on American and New <clears throat> Zealand hops. Yeah, it's it's funny when you speak to brewers like Jack Barron springs to mind because that was the most recent conversation we had. He despairs over it. It's like that we just simply don't have the environment to create the crazy ass hops that they do in america obviously and in in the new world um new zealand and 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 beyond so it's like it's the despairing of it it's like they're trying to you know synthesize the right soil types or water the right conditions but we just don't get it in this country for that style of beer anyway i'm going to put the old next beer uh, in fact actually no i'll i'll this isn't fair, but good chemistry. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a rating out of five on it. Let's see what people think. Um, keep talking, Paul. While I just add these options. Oh, I'm just more yeah. intrigued to see what you do. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, we, <laughs> we we can only have. Yeah, I mean, no one's gonna give it a one. No, let's change it. Let's just let's, change let's, that because everyone's everyone's reluctant to give a five anyway. There, there's, so, there's there's all kinds of sexy chat happening in, in here now. Everyone's I everyone's love, paired off with each other. I love sexy chat. Right. So we for this bit, I mean we should have done this for the others. Apologies that we haven't, but we will for the next one because we'll no doubt do another one of I'll these. Be my but first wee wee break. Give your give your uh give your good chemistry beer a rating on the poll if you can. Um I've omitted the five because it only allowed me to have four options. And also, <laughs> people don't want to rate fives anyway. So, just fours. Although fours do become the new five at that point. But, yeah. Um, let us know when also you're kind of ready to move on to the next one. I mean, we're, we're going to probably put another poll up in a minute just to see if everyone's moving because we are actually moving ahead of schedule, which is kind of what we feared, but equally what we also expected. So don't worry. We've got some beers, at least for us, that we've got lined up in the back. Um, everyone can kind of bring their own. If we, if we finish by about half nine and... We've hit the stout at nine o'clock, which, a, which won't happen to be fair. But we've got a oh. guest who desperately wants to come up, and we're now sponsored by Cats. This is Steve. So sponsored by Cats, and now I need to go for a wee. So you do your thing, and I'm going to try not to append the settings. Well, I, I, I want to catch up on the uh, the old sexy chat that's going on in here because uh, <laughs> I, the the. I don't know if it's the same with you guys, but in our view, the poll is now obstructing some of our chat. And I can just see serious pig truffle cheese. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I'll get you now. Seabass, on with you. Absolutely classic. Don't hate me for the supermarket beer snack, but I'll do jalapeno pretzels. Ah, I'm with you, man. I'll, I'll, I'll be good at that kind of stuff. Um, same with it. We've had a chili at the start, but then first buds were all rock on. Right, Jack Glasshouse, thank you. Uh, next one, Mosaic Eldorado in uh, Petricor, thank you. I think we're both like, I'm looking forward to it, mate. I've, I've held up, sorry, I've held off on it for, for a week or so now. So, um, looking forward to getting on, on that. <laughs> Normally, I shit on Brew York. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, but just to put their brown ale because brown ale, yeah. We, we've got a couple of brown ales in the uh, in the old. Uh, I'm gonna call it a cav, but it's not really a cav. But uh, yeah, I'm it's, not gonna call it it's a it's a lean to. It's a lean to at the moment. <laughs> I'm gonna call it a cav because it sounds more exotic. Did you ever have that Hey You Goyle Stout? Uh, is that a Buxton beer? See, bus. Feel like it might be. We've only got six six votes from the twenty two that are in, but I mean only. That's fine. Yeah, there's not many people who've got yeah. the box to be fair. But I thought about what is that? 12, 10, 12 people in the box. It's it's an above average. <laughs> it's enjoyed it's, beer. It's, it's more than we expected. <laughs> um, no, I, I think that's really good. I'd, I'd give it a. I mean, just to make it more difficult, I'd give it probably a three and a half because I just think it's really good based on that scoring. God, it's, it's too much too much chat going on. But uh, I'm just trying to scan through um, if there's any questions. I like the brew your Christmas stout. Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> I think I, my, my Brew York experience is tainted by uh, Bruce, sorry, Juice Forsyth. I fucking hate that beer. But is this because you just hate Bruce Forsyth? Just, maybe. I mean, this is, yeah. This is the whole if thing. I hate Bruce about... Forsyth. Why would I hate Bruce Forsyth? Because I do. Strange. He's dead. There's worse, anyway, there's worse people. Um, no, right, uh, right. Still waiting through beer one of mine. Uh, the mortality will be there all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's only just finished pouring out the can. You, 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 have you got to the, the, the? You have to put the spoon in yet to, to get the bottom out. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, good, good story actually for Mother's Day because my mom. Yeah, it, for those of you who joined on the last live stream, uh, we, we revealed that my parents yeah. love Mortalis. They were really into the smoothie sours box that, oh, yeah. that yeah. came from from Bruiser. Um, so they love Mortalis. And it turns out that mom's just really into like smoothie sour beers, the thick ones that don't say anything like beer, they just taste like fucking cocktails. So when it came to Mother's Day, I was like panicking, thinking, what the fuck am I gonna get? What the fuck? And I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get over to you, Mom. What would you what what would you want to do? She's like, Don't worry, son, I'm at Crufts on the Sunday. That's showing dogs. So I was like, so you're not worried about Mother's Day? She's like, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. Just just bring me some of those nice beers on Tuesday. No, I can't get more Talis. I, I don't know what to get Bring more me more Talis, son. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so she wants smoothie sours. We should just said she wanted fucking jewellery or something. It'd been cheaper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, so what I ended up doing is I, I was like, okay, well, who's who are the brewery that do smoothie sours better than anyone else in the uk in the uk mm. i know where this is gonna go though because yeah only well, you know the story but these guys don't asvex so i was like there's two cans of asvex left at hot vault bang i'm taking that and then also mark suggested that i took the vault city uh black current kirsch there was like a really thick black current one like a whatever it was Black cherry and whatever. I'm sure it's very nice, but whatever it was, it, either whatever. way, it's your worst nightmare. Yep. But then, go over these cans for Mother's Day. Fine, made up about it. Loves it, great. But anyway, she sends me a message like on like the Wednesday or something, or Wednesday or the Thursday, and she's like, "Are you trying to kill me?" <laughs> and I was like, "I mean, wh why?" And it turns out that the cans of the Asvex had exploded. <laughs> Which, let's be honest, for those of you who know know your, your beer and your silly uh, silly sours, you know that that's a it's a hazard of the occupation, isn't it? With big, uh, that heavily sour. fruited smoothie Smooth, sours, silly smoothie sours, because uh, you get secondary fermentation in the can. Yeah. which then results in. Does it? Um, which is which is essentially what happened. Don't do that just yet. Let's. We, we need to make sure that everyone wants to move on to the next beer. Does it, to, let's give it two minutes. Jack Little is chomping at the bit. Jack, um, Jack, were you, were you part of the uh, the brewing of this beer, by the way, or did the, yeah, are I mean, you uh, give us some brewing notes? Do you just work behind the tap room? Because to be honest, you work behind the tap room. Do you work behind the bar in the tap room? Because. I mean, we'll, we'll go into this in a minute, but essentially I asked Josh for some notes on this beer and he said he was going to get me some. Never did. Um, <laughs> Nezd beer. I'm going to keep it like that. Yeah, Nezd beer. Nezd beer. 
Nesbeer. Uh, everyone ready for the Nes Nesbeer? Grab seed Nesbeer. So as soon as that hits 80% after four votes, we'll go for it. Does awesome. anyone remember, just jumping back, does anyone remember the uh, the great staggeringly good um, incident of COVID lockdown when they released, yeah. oh man, what was it called? The, the the big cherry stupid smoothie sour which exploded everywhere because they had a yeah the the, it was the, the, the chewy cherry wrecker the chew, the wrecker <laughs> that was that was right the, the, the wrecker which basically ruined people's carpets and furniture yeah so I remember because you used to do hall oh, yeah. boxes didn't you because you were doing like the premier hop thing yeah, where yeah. like you could you put it out on social media and <laughs> yeah. go like yeah I'll take that so um yeah, I remember reserving a chewy cherry wrecker and before my box, so that went into my box, but then before the end of it, you said to me, because uh, I didn't know you were so well at this point. Yep. I didn't really, didn't really know you that much, other than I used to work with you, but I didn't really know you. We went on holiday together. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we saw each other on the plane to Belgium. We adopted a child together. But yeah, yeah. Apart from that. Um, but you said, uh, we can't, we can't actually give you that beer now because of it's it's been recalled, so yeah. we can't do it. So I was like, "Fuck!" So that means I can't get one. No, no doubt. If I knew you like I knew you now, you'd be like, "Did I not just give you one?" No, you didn't. I had to get one off Mark. <laughs> what a good. Yeah. So sorry, mom. So yeah. So I was telling Mark about my uh, my problems at the time about not being able to follow you. <laughs> and he's like. I've got like 24 cans which in the back, get which I can't get rid of. And he's like, he just went and got me one. And I went, can I have it? And he went, yeah, yeah. I was like, what, what do you want for it? He's like, well, nothing. I can't, can't sell it. Can't sell it I can't know? sell it. Yeah. He's like, just don't put it on untapped. Or if you do, don't mention where you got it from and don't tell anyone that yeah. I've done this. Um, now, I'm assuming that after like four years, that'll have passed. We can we can now say it's summary crimes now, isn't it? It's like that time when I admitted to cycling and riding scooters drunk. They can't do you for it because there's no evidence. Yeah, I don't think giving someone a slightly over carbonated beer is going to anyway. Let's going to get you in prison. Let's get ourselves on glass house. So this oh, is it's that time. It's that time. It's Dipper so o'clock. Yeah, we are approaching Dipper o'clock now. So. This one is falling into the category of you don't see these often. Um, now, now what, what was the logic behind the we don't see this op often selection for this beer? So I suppose it was a bit of a – this is more of a, a kind of tilt towards our wider audience. So our wider audience – is very much not always in the West Midlands, therefore they won't always and get access to. They, yeah. they just have to live with it. Yeah, but I'm sure they're doing just fine, <laughs> even the ones in Hull. Um, but Glasshouse are about a bit, but they aren't about enough. In the Midlands, we know them quite well, and we know that they can get out to other places. But really, I don't see them checked in much, and when I look on... Um, videos of a certain beer channel, uh, which we may or may not be doing a collaboration with, like the Craft Beer Channel. Who? On their comments, you always see people popping up saying, um, mention Glasshouse, or when they did actually drink Glasshouse beer, I think over Christmas or something, what, whatever it was, when they mentioned Glasshouse on one of the videos, people were like, it's great that Glasshouse finally got a mention. Now, we've been talking about Glasshouse since... Last year, the, early last a year for a whole year. I've been raving about on the them. channel. The, the, the second I tried them, yeah. we actually yeah. in one of our videos because we're shamelessly self-promoting as we are. We um, we did a video that was like the trad dad video, didn't we? Five yeah. beers to get your trad dad into craft beer, and Glasshouse featured in there because they do exceptional modern cask. I'd, I'd say beyond exception, I think they're one of the best in the country. Yeah. I mean, they've even done like a red ale on cask, and it actually really worked well. <laughs> it was brilliant. Um, but you don't see them outside of the West Midlands sphere. 
Yeah, it, the, the, the edging up, it, it, yeah, it's slow. And obviously so. people like Seabass and, and Cam and Mersey Beers could tell us different maybe if they see Glasshouse quite regularly. You're probably going to see him in tap, uh, sorry, bottle shops and stuff. I, I doubt you're going to see him on tap that much. But, uh, yeah, hopefully that changes because they're fucking amazing. Yeah, but um, yeah. but essentially we know that we based on this we wanted to include a glass house or, or or a local a local brewery, um, which is why we originally said we we're going to include nothing bound uh, for the IPA factor because we knew that he makes great IPAs, but I would actually say that nothing bound actually is probably the hype is actually riding really strong on him at the moment. Yeah. And well, it's it's hitting it's hitting what everyone wants in the, yeah. in, in, a, in a bigger sense, which is really well made hazy new england style ipas yeah and that that's his that's his and, I, and i'm not gonna say that that has anything to do with the fact that we did a video with him back in april last year and since then that was one of our best best videos yeah yeah like over a thousand views just on that one just in very early on but that just goes to show that people want What's up and coming? And I do genuinely believe that Glasshouse are one of the breweries that are fucking up and coming. Yeah, they're bringing a lot to the party. If you're into your modern IPAs and your fucking hazy beers, they deliver it. Onto this one though, Pentracore. So usually they do, they do a Dipper series. Usually it's like I think they're on Dipper V4 at the moment. They're doing the cloud water thing. Jack will know. Yeah, I mean Jack's Jack's in here. Jack uh, works for. Um, Glasshouse. Yeah. Uh, not that we're beholden to his opinion or anything like that, because um, it's, it's good to have a sense check though, because we yeah we we can make shit up there. Um, yeah, because I mean we we might we do make things up <laughs> just to entertain ourselves. Um, but, right, we'll read the chat in a minute. Let's have a, a quick ronk and see where we go. So with this. on this, if you take a step, it's nectar on uh, I, uh, nectar on mosaic and El Dorado. And you should be getting big tropical fruits. Well, let's look at the colour first. Big of all, mango. Actually. I mean, it's everything you've just described is there. Yeah. In the aesthetic, so that's good, isn't it? Mango, pine, pineapple. I, I do get pineapple quite a lot, even though maybe there isn't pineapple. We've done an extra on pops in focus. We have, and I learned nothing from it. So clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you just say stone fruit. Just, just, just stone say stone fruit. fruit. Stone this fruit is grape fruit. That's good. That's sweet. I'm not, I haven't gone for the taste yet, but there's a lot going on in the aroma. Love it. Well, first I'm going to oh, end. No, completely different on the taste. What? I'm going to end that poll. Um, but like, yeah. Oh. For me, there's there's mango and what's going on there? Something else. Ooh, interesting. I'm going to delve into the comments. So Mersey Beer said, <laughs> "I mean, this is this goes back to the sour comment." Uh, Did your mom keep the sour outside the fridge? They always live at the back. <laughs> they of They always do. They always yeah. Do. To be fair, if you don't keep those sort of beers in the fridge, they will explode. <clears throat> Uh, Mersey beer. Oh, nice. Taps and bottle of Southport have a good relationship with Glasshouse, so tend to get a bit of keg, and that place is only thirty minutes away from me. Yeah, I think I think the keg and the the cans are going to be more readily available, but it's the cask that I want people to try because I think it's as good as you're going to get in this country. Really also, good. Mersey beers. I do like Glasshouse, but unpopular opinion. Rivington is better. Well, I'm a Rivington. Rivington gets my vote too as they come in proper size cans. Now, Lee actually brings up a really good point because Rivington do come in 500 mil cans, don't they? Yeah. Which I always mark up for. So, Rivington are in my top five brewers in the country. I'd agree. Just just, just the general enjoyment. I'm, I'm. Unabashedly, um, you're a rivet. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a Rivington nut. Yes, you're a Rivingtonian. Um, we've got uh, Rob said we've got the Glasshouse Little Strata Pale Ale on at the shop bar I work at part time. Rob, tell us where you work. 
let us know where you're at and um I mean, not saying we'll come and see you, but other people could maybe check you out in the area. Mm. Um, not, not that we don't want to come and see you. It's just time, you know. Um, Jack Little, how would you rate this against the other Glasshouse Dippers? First thought, Jack, this is unusual. I think this is... It's really sweet. It, it's almost like... None of this is derogatory, by the way. I think it's really, really interesting. It's like overripe yeah fruit. very very like, overripe fruit intensely how do you describe it? it it's intensely sweet and it's i think it's betraying its abv a little bit because it is what eight percent yeah i mean it, it's it's deeper strength it 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 feels a very american dipper or in fact american ipa let's be honest in that regards, yeah, you know what I mean, it, it's like emphasizing the it's squeezing out the sweetness of the fruits or the ripeness of the fruits. Um, my first reaction is I really love the aroma, the taste just took me back a little bit because it didn't smell like it tasted. But again, with most most of these things, these big beers, just like let, let it settle a bit on the palate. I'm starting to really enjoy it, yeah. I think, I think it's a big old, interesting beer. Well, just in the interest of a bit of entertainment in the chat for those that are around Glasshouse or Rewington, I've decided to put it to the test because we've got a few conflicting opinions. So uh, when, it, when, it, when it always ends up in uh, quarter fractions, then you, you know <laughs> <laughs> your sample group isn't particularly large. Let's be honest. Um, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's. I mean, we're not going to do live scoring because that's that's ridiculous because we're not Soccer AM. Um, Is that still going? I think so. Oh, Jesus Is Christ. Soccer AM still going? I'll run another poll for that, whether it's yes or no. Mm. Um, so, no, yeah, I, I agree. It's, I think Dipper V, the, the, the Glasshouse Dipper V series is better than this. Because I think there's more bitterness. And well, this, this... I think there's usually, I think what they usually do, I mean, I know that Nectaron's in here. I know that Nectaron is a big favorite hop of theirs. Now, Glasshouse, Glasshouse do the, they brew the most amount of nectar on of any beer outside of that's any brewery outside that's of New Zealand. That's a really interesting stat, that is. Yeah. So they, they fucking love nectar on. But I feel like in the other in the other Dipper V series that they've done, it's been uh there's been more South American hops that have gave them more complexity. I don't feel that this is massively complex. It's just kind of sweet. I do like it. I can't. I don't think it's complex, but I'm not after complex in this regards. But mm. it, it, it's what, what I think this is. It's emphasising the, um, the 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 ripeness. It, it's gone right. We know we can get like ripe mango. How far can we push this? And how how far can we tropical fruit this bad boy? But make it like overripe to the point where it doesn't even. You look, you've got the sweetness, but you haven't got the sharp. It's saturated taste. with fruit. You're, you're, pu you're pushing yeah. it to the background. I, I do like that, and it's, it's it's got that kind of dankness going on. I get. I right. think that's more complicated than quite a lot of dippers. Is it is it working as well as I a think lot of other dippers the glass house have done? And that's. that's I think one thing, thing that this definitely does, and let us know in the comments what you guys are thinking. Um, my mum's saying she's getting mango. That's yep. good. Always good. Um, it is sweet. I think that this is unmistakably a dipper. Like yeah. there, there is, you know, sometimes you have a beer and you're drinking it, and it could be an IPA, and you think this could actually be a dipper. That's this drinks show. like a dipper. Go with that. This right here, it's unmistakably a dipper. That's what I, I think. It's unmistakably, unmistakably an English dipper, and it tastes very much like an American IPA. In that regard, so sweet, pushing that forward, or almost like, wow, that's a big beer. You, you know, you're trying to get everything out of that. Yeah. Now, do I? It's it's almost got a verdanty nose. The, the dankness is there. Yeah, like the, and, the, and the, a bit of melon on the nose. I thought there was ants on your wall, but it it's like holes. Don't say that. Just make it hell. Jesus yeah. Christ. I thought it was just ants crawling up his wall, but I think it's where people have had shelves up. Where he... yeah. yeah, that's just the holes from... 
Anyway, that was a, that was a detour. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the original owners of this place were midgets because who puts a shelf that high? What do you be banging your head? I mean, just what do you do? It's ridiculous. That's that's a ridiculous place for a shelf. Anyway, you you're not to see that. Classic dipper nose, yeah, get get that. Again, I think the aroma's better than the flavour, if I'm honest, in in that regards. Um, but it's it's a good beer. I think it's. It's showcasing the hops in, a, in an interesting way. Evening, Craig. How you doing? Um, Tom, do you call this, Craig? <clears throat> so, <laughs> so the Glasshouse versus Rivington thing, um, of of 12 votes, it's 67 to 33 to Rivington, mm. which, you know. Now, if, if you were to say, though, who does the best cask, Rivington would lose horrifically, to be honest. Um, yeah, I've, I've got to say, I, as much as I love Glasshouse, I I'm going to say I'd prefer Riv. I'd, I'd say that who are better of the two, I'd say Rivington. But that's. Um, let's carry on with the Glasshouse rating of the beer. I, look, I, I, out of four. I think it's interesting. Oh, I think it's got character. I think it's showcasing the hops well. Um, it's got a lot of body to it, but um, yeah, it's veering slightly towards the American esque for my liking, which is sweet. So, checking in with uh, the comments, we have uh, thank you, Lindsay. I agree. To you. Lindsay, which is uh, aka my mother, um, this one smells better than it tastes. Uh, that's that's what my mom said. That's what she said. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Um, Cam said, not much around Liverpool, I'm afraid, on the taps. <laughs> that must be another conversation going on in the chat somewhere. Um, <laughs> Rob said he prefers Glasshouse over Rivy. Which is, depends which is, on the beer, depends on the day. Yeah. Um, Mersey Beers, Rivington also do cask. They're moving to the country. New Zealand Pile is banging on cask. And Rob also said, because we asked him about where he was based or where he works, I do two Sundays a month at the Triangle in Shipley, West Yorkshire. Shipley's lovely. It is. Yeah. I've been around that area, but not when I was into beer, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's about a 10-minute walk down from the main road from the Salt Beer Factory. Seabass uh, says, oh, obviously, classic dipper nose. And, yeah, I mean, that, that kind of takes us up to, to, to where we are. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good there. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a beer worthy of discussion. Well, actually, it, it's interesting that beer actually had a lot more to say about it than mm. I was expecting because when we were doing a bit of research about the brewery to start with, uh, which actually we didn't we didn't come out and say, so Glasshouse... Because we kind of know Glasshouse. Yeah, yeah, it, it yeah, feels yeah. a bit of a cheat, doesn't it? But, obviously but, but for those who don't know, Glasshouse are... A uh, brewery that have been around since 2016. They were founded by a guy called Josh and a guy called Callum. And then they found another Josh. Um, Just lying around. Who is notoriously unreliable at getting back to any kind of messages. You're not because that way, Chris. No, no. So I met Josh, uh, little Josh, at a, a tap takeover at the Hot Vault back in at the beginning of December. And essentially signed them up for a video. We have loads to say about Glasshouse, as as this video yeah. will no doubt say. And he's like, yeah, man, just just message me. Just message me on WhatsApp or whatever. Anyway, message him after Christmas, because I thought, well, you know, I'll leave it to after Christmas. Fucking nothing. Stone cold nothing. To the point where I, like, I went, I was like, I'm not going to WhatsApp him now. Maybe I'll just iMessage him instead. So I just sent him, like, generic text messages like, Hey, because maybe he's one of those guys that doesn't fucking use WhatsApp. You just go, hey, hey, yeah, hey. and How still, no, and still nothing. It? But then, like at the end of January, I sent him another one, just being like, "Yo, is 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 this happening?" And he was like, "Oh my god, so sorry, I've been really busy." Then, interestingly, never heard anything since. By the way, after that, after I replied to that, but then, interestingly, one of the things that me and Paul said, but. We only had this idea yesterday when I was queuing for the um, the helicopter ride at Peppa Pig, uh, Miss Rabbit's helicopter ride. I wouldn't recommend going on that one. It takes too long. You get stuck halfway up 
as they let other people on at the bottom. And you kind of go around then two runs, but then it stops again and you're waiting for kids to get on. And then you just end up with a three-year-old or however old your kid is, and they're just sat in there with you. And you just sort of like, they're saying, why are we up here? Why are we not moving? And you're having to explain for a lot of the ride. So I wouldn't recommend Dude. Miss Rabbit's helicopter ride at Peppa Pig World. Although I would in Thailand. What? what? No, just Anyway. Just uh, but while I was in the queue for that ride, which I wouldn't recommend, uh, I messaged Josh just saying, we're featuring Glasshouse is Pentracore on our live drink along. Do you have any notes, any kind of like fucking funny factoids that we could talk about? And weirdly, I, I actually sent you a message just saying, I sent him this message. <laughs> I sent him no this message. Way There's no gonna, way he's going to reply. No but way. before I'd sent you the message, he replied to me and said, Hi, man. Sorry I've been so slow responding to everything. The industry has been a whirlwind this year. No, yeah, I mean, no shit. And then he put, yeah, for sure. I'll send some details over this afternoon. And I'm like, great stuff. No worries. Get how it is. I'll wait for those notes. Busy man. Never got any notes. But I knew that I wasn't getting any notes. I mean... Jack, be honest. Did he send you as a vessel? I mean, we don't even know Jack's still in here. He's, he's done his bit now. He's, 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 <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. it's just like I showed up. The, the the drink was a success. I mean, the, no, just can I get my overtime pay now, please? How, how do the, how do the ratings look? So we've got um, so we've got the one to four rating. <laughs> Jack said no, he didn't send me. We've got the one to four rating. Uh, we've currently got. Half of the people that have rated have given it a four, which is the top marking. It could have been a five. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but let's say let's let, say four, let's, let's not scrutinise it. Let's say four's a five and one's a two. Totally not complicated. <laughs> yeah. So let's hope, rate it at a four. Hopefully, you've all got that. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Jack. We're pulling your leg a little bit by by proxy. Lee said the dinosaur ride is better. Yes. Um. <laughs> Parents therapy. Come on. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it, it was better than I was expecting. But anyway, uh, not the helicopter ride. Planet do not hood TV. do not go on Miss Rabbit's helicopter ride. Um, Mersey beers dropping down in ABV. Couldn't do a dipper after seven percent mortalis. Opened electronic butterfly payout from Asvex, which funnily enough features in one of our upcoming videos, the Hops in Focus Citra. It does. Uh, it, it was it was a brave opening gambit, man. Seven percent more talis. I, I, I appreciate your gumption. You were really accounting for the fact that you had to get your son to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll start big, and they just slide to bed. Yep, love it. Right, are we nearly ready? Well, I mean, what are we saying from that six votes there? Are we going to call it? We've, we've still technically got time. I'm going to leave that open till court pass. That's another three minutes. We can fill time with that. Yeah, but that that isn't the poll saying, shall we get another beer? That's just a poll saying, what do you like about it? Steve said, say hello to my sister, Nick. She's watching her. Hello, Nick. Hi, Nick. Um, it's It's good to not see you. I mean, I can't see you. Um, I didn't mean it like that. So Steve's sister's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Nick. You, 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 you've just been um, judged. You've been Christ. <laughs> no, um, she's she's great, Nick is, and oh, she wait. she knows how to parent a kid. That's what I. That's what I like. I was sitting at a drink along around Steve's, and we drank. Uh, what was it? An eleven-year-old Guinness. Glad you. Do, uh, Things didn't cut out just before you finished that sentence. Yeah, so we were drinking an 11-year-old Guinness. Yep. It wasn't the highlight of the, the, the drink-along session. We had lots of other beers before. Hang on, 11-year-old Guinness? Yeah, so... so my brain just took a minute to catch up. No, yeah, so, so Steve had a pack of... I think what it was, it was two Guinness bottles and a pint glass, and he got given that as, like, maybe a housewarming present when he moved into his flat 11 years ago. Jesus Christ, and power. He was using he was using the glass or, or has used the glass. Glass is probably smashed. Probably didn't probably didn't live as long as the second bottle of Guinness. He drank the first bottle of Guinness, didn't drink the second, kept it, 
found it 11 years old it was and he was like it's a christmas session how about we all just drink an 11 year old guinness and we did what, what was the outcome um well i'll tell you that after i'll tell you my finishing story about nick so while we're having this session um halfway through it it was it was kind of like this you know except we weren't on camera we were talking a lot about the beers and just getting really geeky about it and then nick pulls up she's got a daughter in hand who's fell asleep in the car because it's like eight o'clock at night and she just comes walking through kids just wedged across the shoulder just slung mm. across asleep absolutely smashed on and, I, and i'm like oh my god i can't even get if i stop the car with may if she just wakes her so i can never get her out of the car into the fucking bed no issues but apparently nick can which i think is testament to her as a mother so i'm going to raise a glass to nick oh that was a story yeah that was a story oh, but anyway onto the guinness nick, nick, no, no dishes babe but that was a shit story though. onto no. the guinness um parent pulls child out of the car <laughs> I'm not rich. even in a superhero way. Not that it was going off a bridge. It was they just got out the car. It could have been off the Baltimore Bridge. I don't know. But it I wasn't. wasn't I wasn't there. there. Oh, you weren't there. Anyway, you could have emphasized the, the the bottle of Guinness wasn't. It wasn't the best. It it kind of tasted exactly what you'd expect. It just tasted like sweet water and a bit of cardboard. Hang on a minute. I drank twenty five year old white. So is that White Lightning by any chance? Or just something white equally cider. fucking awful. Oh, you dirty pig. And you're still alive. I like that Carl Taylor just said 11-year-old Guinness. <laughs> and, when I and when I woke up, I had a child. Yeah, I had to put to bed. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know, Steve. I hope, I hope Nick got what she wanted from that. Um, I respect her. Nick, Great. Nick, thank you for doing what you're doing. But that, that story was just you taking a child out of a car. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the the, the eleven year old Guinness was. was oh, we didn't even rate it in the end because we thought it's not really fair to rate a Guinness. Not that Guinness would suffer because of its ratings, because it's so macro. But it still doesn't feel fair to judge it based on consuming it in a way that it shouldn't be consumed. Understood. Understood. Which I think is a. I'm back on a bit of a Guinness, a Guinness lesson, thing. A moment. lesson for all of us. I do like a bit of Guinness at the moment. I've heard a lot about their Guinness uh, 0%. I've had a lot of people talk about that. Oh, we can talk about it. Just keep it away from me. <laughs> right. <laughs> what are we doing next? Is it time for. Par so, firstly, the, the, the ratings for Glasshouse, we've, after seven votes. Oh, overwhelmingly positive. Overwhelmingly positive. We've got, only got 1 1. Jack, take that to the bank. You've got one, two, you one, get, three. You get a pay rise now for just doing basic research. And then the rest. Look, look what I've got. The rest is the same four. So that's that's a that's a good four right there. Um now I'm I'm gonna assume that everyone is ready for the uh for the next bit. For the uh the big boy. I might just uh if I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start a little poll for this one just to make sure everyone's ready. Hang on. Good night, Johnny Macro. Oh Johnny Macro's gotta go to bed. Um Good night, guys. Someone's got to keep the country moving. Great beers, great night. It's it's true. It's true. Um, Thank you, Johnny, Johnny Macro. See you soon. Johnny Macro Love you. there confusing himself with the Prime Minister of Great Britain. <laughs> well, thanks for coming. <laughs> to be fair, he delivers all the food to uh, schools and care Which, which care is homes. more than Richie soon does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, You, you could say that. Um, so. Anyway, a, a poll where I've only put one... <laughs> one option where it was yes or yes. Um, we've, <laughs> we've, we've got wrestles between us. It looks like we need to get on the next bit. Right. What were you going to do about glasses? Because so, well, do do you want to go and wash some glasses while I tee up this beer? No, we need special glasses. Yeah. Yeah. So the old Pohalla Cellar series. So. We're really excited about this one just because um, this one wasn't actually for sale at the Hot Vault at the time, and we we managed to convince them to let let us. It's Paul wrestling with the wax seal of the bottle that we've got. Um, yeah, we managed to convince them that it was a good idea for us to whack the 
Pohalla beer, which they hadn't yet whacked out. I think this beer has been out since their Baltic Porter Day. So there may be a chance that some of you guys have had it before. I think Baltic Porter Day was in end of January, was it? Yes, yeah. End yeah, of yeah. January. Um, so I think it, but it's it's part of their cellar series, um, all beers that they've barrel aged and kept in the cellar. I think it's also rebrews of stuff they've done previously that they've also kept batches behind and cellared. Um, so yeah, I mean Do you want to come back about three hours when I've got three spots? Yeah, I mean we, we probably should have accounted for this. The so I've got I've got the perfect tool for it. Don't worry. At this point, it's coming. I'm going, go. to, I'm going to move the camera just so oh. if you've done it. Yep. So, I don't know if I've showed everyone this before. The greatest piece of equipment any beer aficionado should earn. So, it's got. Well, it's obviously a, a bottle opener. He's got a slicer that cuts through these quite beautifully. But then the pièce de résistance, it's rubber lined here, and you can slip it onto your bottles and seal them shut. Like Holy a cork. fuck. And there we go. And there's a great for obviously sharing bottles and the, and thing, the things you open at 2 o'clock in the morning when you think that's, see, that's the, the best thing to do. We focus on shirts but what we should be doing is focusing on that shit because um that shit would be way more interesting than shirts and easily maybe far more useful i mean i'll be honest with you chris i got that from the craft beer channel about three years ago so they've already done a thing on it as they do usually. Made, made in germany um but the it's thing is yeah. we, we we don't know anyone that, that that could make these so um but yes pohala so pohala are a estonian brewery so in Tallinn, I think it is it's Tallinn. Yeah. They started up in 2011, I think it was. I think these, these guys have got quite a famed history in the sense that they started fairly early on. I think most people who are even slightly au fait with craft styles in this country will know. You know, they've made a name for themselves over the past. Well, that's years. the thing. I mean, they're known for pretty much just one thing, aren't they? Yep. They're, known, they're known for their big, big dark beers. Style. And I love to put a wax seal on it just to piss you all off. Um, so, as as Big Ev is encountering here, can't get the bloody thing going. Nightmare, up. go underneath it with some kind of Ooh. knife and just just peel it round the out the, the underneath of the, the bottle top, and then just go in with a, a hefty uh, bottle opener and it'll it'll pop. But yeah, they're a fucking nightmare. Those wax tops. I understand the re the relevance for them, uh, but I think they're. Uh, the oh, the well, it was just it was just about sealing because you can. By the way, Chris just shouted a, a question. I don't know if you heard it from the toilet. So there we go. I can hear him pissing as well, which is horrible. Um, so you know, theoretically, you can you can lose carbonation or you can you know get air in there and infect the beer. I guess if you have a standard top on there. So this is a cast iron guarantee that you're not gonna you're not gonna have the beer well close the door man um you know you're, you're gonna get the beer as expected from the brewery so understand the idea of the wax but jesus christ it's so hard to get into maybe just a technology just to pull the wax round open the bottle you know? i thought it was to make sure they don't date rate me no oh, that as well i need to finish my glass you are time. you know absolutely desirable Right, here we go. So, pudding time. Time for pudding, boys and girls. I can't get the thing open. Just smash it against the wall. Um, right, set a series. So, as you've said, they've been out for a little Disco. bit. Disco, so this is whiskey barrel aged. The beauty of barrel aged stouts, bottle stouts in particular, is who cares how old they are. Yeah, and also the fact that they've spelt whiskey with just the Y and not the EY shows basically this is scotch. Yeah, and thank God they did. Yeah. Because it's okay, not bourbon. It's going to be We have a rich and vibrant imperial stout aged extensively in French whisk, French whiskey barrels. Oh, that smells fucking great. 12.5%. Give boys that a ronk. And give, girls. That, give that a ronk, me mom. I'm getting. I mean, firstly, 
I'm actually getting peatiness from the whiskey. I'm getting a bit of fucking... Christ, that's boozy. That's great. Which you'd expect to barrel age. We got ourselves a 12.5% barrel age stout. All right. Okay. We're, we're into big boy territory here. I haven't even tried it, but I just like I just like to smell it. What are you thinking, Paul? Um, You've always got knocked off your chair. <laughs> so my thing about barrel aged stouts, <clears throat> I one I love them. I love the artistry. I love the dedication to the the, the cause. I love the crossover between elements of craft in in, in 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 this world of you know generating you know big adult boozy drinks and I love it I love the reuse cycle of it I love by the way whiskey I, I really feel like there's a book coming so there, there, there there is a book because I always get the same thing when I have these every time I have a big barrel age whiskey in particular stout I always go I wish I was having a whiskey instead um because the intensity of the flavor and this is intense it's great <laughs> is almost betrays the fact that it's it needs to be in this long form drink and it, it it's weird on 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 the mouth i'm getting like l- like dark fruits loads of dark fruit licorice and it's it's very rare actually because you know you get that like you could you could almost do a bingo card of when people are talking about um about stouts going oh I'm getting uh, licorice coffee chocolate you know it's like a bingo card you're just waiting for people to say it and I don't identify with that when I have stouts a lot of the time I'm drinking a beer and I'm going I don't know I'm I'm just tasting kind of like a a stout that's got maybe some coffee elements to it. But this, heaps of dark fruit, almost like a fucking, like, you know when you have, like, a Black Forest Gatto, that sort of thing. It's like that sort of dark fruit. But then there's just a licorice element. And I'm all for that. Although I don't necessarily usually like licorice. So, but this is really good. I I absolutely agree with everything you've said. So... Stepping back, that's the initial reaction I always get because my, my my lizard brain goes to hard liquor, which I'm very very yeah, au fait with. But I right? think that's, that's a fair point. Yeah. So, but now you've said that, <clears throat> everything you've said is completely relevant there. So it's juicy, it's sweet, the licorice is absolutely there. Getting the cigar thing. Yeah, tobacco is definitely in that. We, we, you know, a lot, I think a lot of barrel aged stouts, especially smoked stouts, for obvious reasons, are Jesus Christ. Hannah's about to take the head off a with a knife. Yeah, to just take pull the wax, cleaver to take the, uh, the the wax off the other bottle. Um, <laughs> um, so you get the tobacco ness of it because it's smoked, and that's really coming through on this. So it's it's one of those. It, it's a big old drink. I think it, it, you have to treat it like a whiskey. Yeah, yeah. I think you have to sure. just sit back and let's see what this is about. You have to sup it. Oh, look at that! Cicerone level two over there is just sliced off with it like a ninja. Honestly, uh, I mean, for me, it's it's annoying that it is always the dark beers that end up. You know, showing up, turning up, which kind of makes me think that next time, if we do one of these, maybe we should bring in a uh, a stout earlier on as well. Because let's be honest, you're either going to finish with a tip or you're going to finish with an impi. Yeah, or or even two dippers. That's why porters are invented, I guess, at this stage. But like for me, what a what a beer this is! It's again now just. You know, you have to make an immediate reaction. That's the whole point of this. So, but you sit back. The <laughs> the juiciness, as in, like you know, dried fruit. You know, 
You're just wringing that juice out of it. Oh, oh. I, like, I, I mean, now I'm getting like raisin like, yeah, on the aftertaste. I mean, yeah. It's like just it, it's there. There's, it's, that, there's that lovely raisin the after. It's obviously can't say rum and raisin because it's not rum, but you know what I mean. That that raisin aspect. It's like raisin and spirit. I don't, I don't think you start with that. It's almost like, yeah. Lee, Lee said you can't, can't start with a step. Can't no, we, would, we wouldn't. We wouldn't start. With one. <laughs> Those worlds are blend. It's it funny actually because while we're looking at the uh, the the first beer, which was, <clears throat> if you exclude the twisted barrel entree, the Johnny Macro beer was the lager. So we were like the go-to brewery for the lagers for us. Were like Lost and Grounded, went there. But four of the beers on the shelf, we had Keller Pills, there was uh, the Lost and Grounded Hellers. And we didn't want, we didn't but, want those because yeah, everyone, uh, everyone's had a beer. Yeah. But then there was Oatmeal Stout and Baltic Porter. Yeah. But I was like, I said to Paul, as, as like a bit of a, a kind of outlandish pitch, I was like, Johnny Macro wouldn't necessarily like it, but Baltic Porter is a lager. In the sense that it's made, it's lager. It's it's cold fermented, you know. So it's like, could we get away with a lager, a craft lager brewery, doing a Baltic porter, which is a lager? Uh, but basically, we're like, no, we need to keep this simple. Yeah, <laughs> we need to, we need to not over fucking egg this. Well, we we should we we should do it at some point if this if we can carry on doing this. But we'll we'll shape things up a little bit because I think that's exactly what we should be doing. We should be. You know, taking preconceived notions of things such as we never start with a stout. You know no. exactly where my head is as well. But you know, why not? You know, there's 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 an Irish stout which is quite famous. I don't know if you've heard well, of it. Well, which is sometimes I, I had three of those before I had dinner at a, a, a restaurant recently. It was fucking brilliant. Well, the other thing is like um, breakfast stouts. You know, th there isn't breakfast IPAs. But there is breakfast stouts because don't, they've don't, got coffee in them, and don't give them, don't give them our ideas. No, there will, there will be shower IPAs. Yeah, oh God. Yeah, all that nonsense. There was there was a thing that um, Legend Steve was was following <laughs> following on Reddit, I think, that was called shower beers. Oh, yeah, and, like, and everyone's just sort of like posing naked. Oh, with, with, with yeah, like yeah, yeah. and uh, literally shower beers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and he was. And I think Steve actually did a photo, which <laughs> confirm or deny, um, Legend Steve. Did you uh, did did you post that photo that you sent to me and Matt? See you, Cam. By the way, uh, see you, Cam. Take Thanks it easy. Me. Thanks for coming. Pleasure. See you in Birmingham, hopefully. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, th I think as far as beers go. We've, we've, we've smashed this. For, I'm really glad, actually, that this beer is what it is because it's everything that I want it to be in the box. You know what I mean? Because you do worry sometimes when you're putting together a box and what do we finish it with? We've got a dipper in there, but how do we top it? And how do we top it for a... How do we top it on budget? You know, that, that, and that's, that, that, that's, and that's the, the main thing, thing. right? I but, mean... My point is, what we've done here... That's a, that's a beast. ...is we fit this in, as well as getting a fifth beer in there, we fit in an Estonian beer. And yes, you know... It's Pahala. It's Pahala, so you, you can find them. I wonder how you pronounce it, actually. I'm going to say... Pahala. Yeah, it is, it's, it's, it's quite impressive. In fact, I'm glad you got in, by the way. Um, yeah, thank, thanks, Seabass. Uh, uh, as you know, Seabass works in a, a, a bottle shop. You know how difficult it is to put big beers sometimes in, in a box for a certain budget. So, yeah, thank, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, but it's cool, man. It's I think he, he, when you look at barrel... I'll, I'll, ch I'll change what I'm going to say. <laughs> When you experience... You sound like you've had a fair few beers tonight. So, so. do you, sir. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Barrel-aged stouts are probably thought of less than something like, you know, a whiskey or something because it doesn't spend anywhere near as much time in a barrel, right? But 
but the artistry is the same. I mean, you've still got to get to the point where what you're putting in the the barrel has got to be roughly what you think is going to come out at the end of it. I know you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to determine taste, flavour stuff because the, that's what the barrel does. But you need to know what you're putting in there is coming out relatively drinkable, right? So I think barrel aged style should be looked at with a little bit of reverence, I think. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'd be really interested actually to know what you know the 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 more connoisseurial people who are into wine and whiskey who haven't really experienced this will think about this. It, uh, it, it perhaps and make I, an interesting video. That's what I mean. Like if, yeah. you, if you get someone who you know, you know. But what what you were saying earlier actually made me really think because one of the things that you said was when I have imperial steps that are barrel aged in whiskies and, and brandy and stuff, it's like, why don't I, I'd rather just be drinking a, a whiskey and a that's brandy. What it makes me think. Yeah. Me. That's what it makes you think. And that's quite interesting because it, it drew a parallel with the ridiculous smoothie sours that people are drinking now yeah. at the mortalities. Cause to all intents and purposes, there isn't much different. They've just somehow managed to make a pina colada, something that's identical to a pina colada without actually making it with the ingredients. They've done it with the ingredients of beer instead and obviously the fruit and stuff afterwards. But it's it's the same thing. It's like you have it and sort of think, well, shouldn't I have just had a would – it, would it have been cheaper for me just to go to a bar and have a pina colada – or a fucking sex on the beach, as it would have been to buy this American can of beer that I've spent 12 quid on. Mm. Probably. But it wouldn't have been beer mm. that you can check in on untapped. So it's so it's it's a really interesting yeah. dynamic, I think. And yeah. it I just I thought it drew a parallel with what you were saying about the the barrel aged steads. Yeah, I, I, I almost think at some point this whole world of barrel aging, you know. You, you, it's like you feel it, we're really early on in that journey. There could be things happening along. We, we don't know what's going to happen if you leave for something for 30, 40 years. You know, we just don't know. I mean, it, <laughs> we know what could happen if you're living for 11. We know, we know what's going to happen the next day if you drink one, probably. But um, we just don't know, right? So it, there's a whole world there, this, this thing of excitement which could happen, and it has to happen with this style of beer. Um, so, yeah, exciting. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm... I mean, I think tonight's been a success, and I, mean, I think we've had four votes in on the rate the beers thing so far, and it's all fours. It'd be, it'd, so yeah. keep keep those votes coming in. Um, uh, for, for some reason, Legend Steve said I did lovely wrinkly ball bag. <laughs> I'm not sure what's a reference to. Uh, I um, did. Lovely wrinkly ball bag. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> that, that's going to go along with <laughs> books that are all turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, bigger, <laughs> bigger, <laughs> bigger <laughs> said the MP is impressive. Um, Cam said, have a pills and a oh. to cleanse the palate after that one. Absolutely. Why not? Uh, we haven't got any, though. Um, I'm going to log in the house. That is Seabass impressive. said, that's an amazing one to get in the box. Thank you very Pleasure. much. I'm Glad we've made you happy on that one. And Legend Steve said, shower beers are underrated, to be fair. Well, we haven't seen the photo yet, Steve. Share it. Share the photo, <laughs> man. Um, Lee said, sex on the beach can be expensive, which is probably true, but I don't know, man. I suppose most of the beers are like pina coladas rather than sex on the beach. So... How does sex? Uh, how does pin, uh, pina colada fit? Tell you what, I really want a stout that's like a white Russian, like an actual, like a like a milky white Russian. Because no, I love white Russian. So that's just colour though. But you milk stouts probably are as close as close as you can get. They don't taste the same. Mm. You don't get that. Milk stouts are generally fucking shot anyway. Yeah. Well, the thing milk stouts generally when you have a milk stout, it's like quite. Sweet and just do I put it in the fridge? Nah. Do I not put it in the fridge? Make your mind up, milk stouts. <laughs> God. God. You're more fickle than my wife. <laughs> anyway. Um right, quick quick question, because we we're kind of approaching um an end of time and yeah, you know, 
bless you all for for joining. We've got 16 people on still. So that's all looking good. Um, right, so should we, should we doom bar this for a minute? Do you mind if I doom bar? We can doom bar. As, as sponsored by Steve Power. So Ebra is a thing that's happened. And I don't know if um, we've got any, anyone still on who works in the industry. See, that's mine now. Ebria was a m- massive seismic yes. pain in the arse for, I think, a lot of people over the past couple of weeks. So if people don't know who Ebria is, um, Ebria are one of the, the probably the first people, me and Hannah, contacted when we thought we wanted to set up a uh, a tap room because they're omnipresent or they were omnipresent at the time. And they're essentially the bruiser for trade. So you order a load of stuff through them and they organise it. Mark's here. I cough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you, you, you've made yourself known. All of Mark from Hotfoot in the house. <laughs> so, yeah, well, Mark, obviously. So Ebri had been um, the trade equivalent of, you know, one-stop shop to order off breweries and get to live right. I think the, be- the, the best way to word it for people who are aware of Bruiser, it's basically Bruiser, but for wholesalers, isn't it? Or, or Pretty bars. much just said that. It's, so thanks, it's... thanks for repeating it. Um, <laughs> drink that. I'm just not listening to you. <laughs> so, yeah. So Ebri are, um, were a massive force in terms of, you know, promoting craft beer in this country. Um, they went under last, last week, the week before? I mean, last they, week? they sort of went under last yeah, week. Well, okay. well there, there was, okay, technically they were they were bought out by... Um, For 30 grand. You're joking. 30 grand. I missed that. Yeah, that was yesterday. Holy fuck. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, you know... Probably as much as Chris's haircut, we got bought out um, <laughs> by by a company called. You might have heard of them, Beer Fifty Two. So Beer Fifty Two are quickly becoming the the, the Sith lords of the, uh, <laughs> it's the, like, the craft beer world. I don't know why it's Scottish companies. It's like fucking Brewdog, and then you got Beer Fifty Two. Mm-hmm. You've just got like a race to the bottom. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what it is. It's like they just. They just want to shit house like each other to the fucking bottom of the pond. But the, the, and I don't know. I the, like the the, the issue, nice one, Scotland. The, the, I guess. the big issue being is you know when so when a company goes under, they, they try their best, and obviously they're, they're going to incur a lot of debts. And because breweries operated directly with Ebria, that when Ebria went under, a lot of breweries, small breweries, breweries we know. Brews, probably you know, um, suddenly became short of cash immediately because they were owed a lot of money through these people who were essentially wholesalers for the brewery trade. So it was a seismic rattle, I think, in the industry. When it's, they went. it's not actually just brewers, it's bars as well, isn't it? Bars, yeah, bars but the, 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 the knock on effect is the same, <laughs> same always, right? They're a, mid, they're a middle man. Yeah. I know. But yeah, it's essentially, they, yeah. they got sold for. Uh, 30 grand to be if to they did what's called if you want to get really businessy about it they did what's called a um is it soft something pack a jedi mind trick on jedi mind trick yeah um it's called a i, I want to say short pack I can't remember the word for it. There's a legal terminology which basically means they buy all their debt and then, but they don't have to pay any debt off whatsoever. But it's, essentially, it's, they it's, they it's went grim. they went bankrupt at like midnight, let's say, and then at five past midnight, they were bought out by a company which just so happens to be Beer Fifty Two. No one knew that they were going to be for sale, so this deal was obviously already done. And yeah. Then they've just popped up again, now saying, hey, we're a new company now. We're still called Ebria. Don't worry. Don't worry. We, we're still called You can still trust us. All 16 of us still work here. It's all fine. Smell, but Just smell this. Just smell this thing. Put in the but nose. you won't get any of your money back if you bought any beer from us or if we bought beer from you and we can't afford to pay anymore. 
you won't get anything from us right. because we're not Ebra anymore. We're like beer 52 Ebra. But what, we, what we're going to do is just not, you know, let you immediately sign off from our services. You have to contact us. Well, just fill out a form. If it, tell you what, Paul, if you want paying for that month of work that I you I don't want did, it, Chris. Just fill out a form and I'll send it to my overlord up in fucking Glasgow or Edinburgh, wherever it is. No, I'm not bothered about the money. It's but fine. I'll send it to my overlord and I'll look at it and I'll say whether or not it's worthy of being um, you know, recompensed. But probably not because as, as far as I'm aware, I don't think, and I'm, I've started following like trade groups within beer now on like face Facebook and shit. I've started joining and it looks like overwhelmingly the evidence is Ebra aren't paying anyone. Or no, rather they're... beer fifty two aren't I'm paying, paying anyone. No. It's it's like it they they they're just falling on the whole we've liquidated line. Yeah. It's like we've liquidated the debts don't hey, exist it's not, anymore. It's not us man. It's not it's not, not it's not, not Ebria as you know it. It's Ebria V two. That's that's what it is. So which is bullshit, and um, it's it's interesting because I think that does show a pivot for uh, beer fifty two. Because I mean, what could beer fifty two have? Uh, yeah, what 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 could they have in interest of buying a wholesaler? It's quite interesting. Maybe it's going to be helping them with um, warehouse storage, or it could be dipping into breweries beers. Like so, maybe if you are on beer fifty two, maybe you're going to start seeing other breweries popping up in there because Ebra have got access to them. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's possibly. It, it, it's an interesting thing. I mean, because I'm, I'm not convinced Ebra have any logistical space that's worth monopolising anyway. What I do think is um, beer fifty two are um, shafting their way. Slowly through the craft beer industry, and what's what's interesting there actually is we should we should bring up some comments. Legend Steve, um, I know Beer Fifty Two. They still contact me despite me begrudgingly telling them I'm an alcoholic in a last ditch attempt to stop them contacting me. Hmm. So yeah, but to be fair, Steve, I did keep signing them up in your name just just <laughs> just, just um, for shits and giggles, really. Hot Vault Marks as prepack. That was it. Prepack administration. So that's 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 the deal that was done, the prepack administration. Um, Lee said Knuts, which I don't think is necessarily to do with <laughs> mul Latin. multiple Danish kings. It's um, <laughs> cunts that shouldn't be allowed. And Mark has followed up with no official statement to trade accounts either, like nothing happened. Yeah. So es essentially, if you want to make your way in the beer industry. I guess just fuck people over like Beer Fifty Two did again. It's just, it's it's like a weird pattern. It just seems to be like Scottish businesses seems to be doing this. Mate, it's not even that. I, th I think right. He, he, here's my slightly cynical forty six year old take on this nonsense. Right, the, the craft beer industry is obviously you know it's a developed and evolved. There's 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 a punk rock element to its core, which is you know we, we're disrupting, we're doing something interesting, we're going back to you know. Artisanal beliefs and craft, right? Fucking hell, dude. I've got more beer. I've got a beer. You'll get some, right? So that's the thing. Then 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 Ebria comes in as a, a a necessary evil in the world where you're distributing these things to people, right? As this is happening, you've got people like Beer 52, which is a cynical marketing tool designed to promote shit cheap. Beer. Fuck off! I'm not trying to make a point here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the lowest common denominator. So it's like late weights, wine. It's you know all those kind of weights, stupidity things that you you know you get sucked into, and it basically becomes a, a thing where you're basically paying for. You, you, you're buying into an industry which you have nothing, no knowledge about and no one's really making any money on it apart from the promise of a pyramid scheme that will probably pay off later on. No, for sure. Now, Beer 52, I understand that business. I get it. It's a thing. Now, Beer 52 irked me to the point of exhaustion during COVID where, for some bizarre reason, because there's nothing else on, 
me and a group of our friends watched their beer 52 covid live spectacular which without any exaggeration was the most embarrassing thing i've ever seen anyone ever do it was cringe they were doing song and dance these are people in the office by the way doing song and dance they got breweries to do weird skits they did their you know their leaders to to be hey cool Hey, we be if it's do. Here's the thing. I'm, it, like, it was like Michael Scott in Carnes. So um, for that very reason, fuck them. <laughs> fuck beer fifty two, and literally, please do everything you can to ban them. Yeah, Disgusting. I think I think there's definitely the thing about you should just buy local, or or buy buy From direct direct, direct to consumer. Um, I'm just putting up a poll now for people. Uh, beer of the night. Um, so there's the four beers. I've excluded the Twisted Barrel one because obviously we weren't. Well, they weren't officially named. Um, but yeah, just just mark up your beer of the night. Uh, shall, shall we have one more beer? What shall would we, what would be the beer be? What would be the beer be? Well, it's what it's, would be the beer be? It's what it's whatever's in your fridge. Ah, oh, there's some good shit in there though. Um, because. What are you guys going to be drinking now? Oh, Luke Podcast got, is on the Allagash. Luke Podcast. Oh, I've got some Allagash, but we, so, we, we had some before we joined this. Yeah, we did, actually. We, that was, oh, Luke! You, Luke, that's our Luke. Yeah, you, you messaged, didn't you? you? Glad you got some. Yeah. Brilliant. No, no, sorry. I know it's our Luke, but I forgot he messaged to say. Yes. Fuck, I want some Allagash. You got some. Nice one. So we've got three votes so far, and all three votes are going for Pohalla. The parlor. Hard to um hard to disagree, really. It I mean it is unfair. Although I would disagree. disagree. My, my favorite beer of the night was actually good chemistry. I think it was the best beer of the well, night. The, it was my favorite. I think it's 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 where you get that point where how do you actually view it in the end? Do you view it for the through the lens of just the thing again? What was what was the beer that brought you the most joy at the time, or do you judge it on what beer surprised me the most? That was that tasted exactly like I thought it was going to taste. Brilliant, massive, huge beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There Good was care. no, there was no surprises here. There was yeah. just, there was just fucking, yeah. ma 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 ma. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Some like, of those films you should do in the nineties. <laughs> but the Good Chemistry one, to be fair, did did change change me personally as a man. Really. No, no, I don't think you did. Either. Don't get a beer. I'm, I'm getting thirsty. All right, guys. Um, we we we're kind of at the end of the. No, no, go and get no, God, no, 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 no. Like, we we kind of at the end of the thing. So, Mark, we've we, we've lost Reynolds, but stop around, have a drink. We're going to get some interesting things from the fridge. How come stomp? Nice. That's a thing in it. See, you, Mark. Um, oh. yeah, go and get go and get a beer. I'm going to have a piss first. Right, and we'll just have a, uh, if you want to hang around for a little bit for the, uh, what, the last the last 10 minutes or so, um, we will talk about, well, firstly, we want to thank you if you guys have, see, see you, Lee, um, if you guys have been watching or checked out the day of video, um, thank you very much, because that video is absolutely, it's done everything that we wanted it to do. So, obviously, when we first started out with this, we knew that we wanted to co cover our favourite breweries. We wanted to film them and find out, and especially speak with the founders and the head brewers and just see what makes them tick and how they brew the beers that they do. And um, we got mixed... Well, we, we did Verdant. Verdant went really well. Northern Monk didn't... Didn't land, and I don't know whether it was a whether it was a marketing thing or or what it was, um, but that didn't quite land, and that kind of it made us a little bit more hesitant towards Daya when we first reached out to them, because before that, in that in in last year, we had nothing bound and barren, two breweries that are very much. Um, still on the way up, still unknown and still working, you know, working the way up. And they were doing better than the Northern Monk stuff, which we expected to do, like, to, to do better, especially as we'd thrown so much like money and, and, and time at it. 
So for Daya then, last week when we released it for Daya 1, because we've got two videos in the in the Daya thing, to actually go well or to... It's it, it's actually the best performing video we've ever made. We've got like 1.4 thousand views on it um, in the first week. And for that to happen, it was just a massive relief. <laughs> it was it was a big monkey off our back because of like shit. Because you know, we 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 invested in making sure that this video was gonna be good too. Um Paul's just flopping his hair around. Oh sorry. <laughs> oh, I, was, I was agreeing with you in <laughs> principle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, we we had to we, we had to try and like push ourselves to keep making something. Which I think is what what we've always wanted to do. It, it's the cliche thing of just saying, uh, not just in brewing, but I suppose in in anything, it's like, oh, we we want to keep pushing the boundaries and stuff. And I'm not saying we want to keep pushing the boundaries because we. All I want to do is make the sort of thing that you would watch on Channel Four or fucking BBC, and be like, that's a really nice, interesting, insightful documentary it, on a brewery it's, it's, you know that that that's the aim of, of of what we're trying to do it's been good man it's it's been re really good in the fact that our viewing it, there's geeky stuff with youtube that we, we always look out for you know from like a jobbing youtube channel to it might be a thing right and things like you know subscribers viewing hours all that boring stuff that i love looking at the stats too. Yeah, but you, you, when you when you think well we're never going to get there and then suddenly you know six months later you are you're going oh this is interesting so you know some for some reason i think because they have shared our video and that's that's getting around and the the, the algorithms now kicking in youtube we I, our subscribers have gone very quickly upwards this over the past couple of months, which has been great. Well, Nick Nikki is very very astute with her. I, I'm choosing my words, Kev, because yeah, I know she, she's done a lot. She's of this. she's she, done she's, a lot of like yeah. sharing different points because essentially what happened was, um, what we found really works is if we do a video for a brewery as our primary element of pushing videos out is instagram it's it's like we will say to them if you want to collab if you can collaborate the reel with us we automatically get access to all the followers that they have because it kind of it shares out at the same time with them so our kind of thing is usually if we meet up with a brewery and do a, a video with them it's like if you don't mind just collaborating on the reel when we launch it yep. It really helps us out. It really helps the reach of the video. You'd be um, surprised how many breweries are a little bit weird about that. Yeah, yeah. They put a lot of trust into you as a, God, I want to say this, content creator. Well, no, that's, that's, but, but that's, that's, that's the is, thing. Right? And 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 the other thing as well with Daya, they've got a lot to lose yeah. in the sense from we, we're we just getting it wrong. Li we're yeah, just little right. minnows that are making videos about craft beer. So when I asked Nikki, she was like, Flat now. She was like, ah, oh, love you guys. No. Um, and I was like, maybe think about it. Cause I think when you see the video, you'll 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 think twice. She she didn't. Um <laughs> but she's, she's like ignored. she's like, don't worry, we've got ways that we should because essentially their logic is if we do this for you as a single YouTube channel, then anyone that comes and rocks someone as a podcast or a or an, an, another YouTube channel that's like us would be like suddenly they've got a collab post with them because they'd have us as a a reference point, which completely understand. Um, so the what she's actually done is just played the the social media long game. Like we share a reel, they don't even mention it until mm. like a day laugh, a, a day after, then they'll like like it. Then a day after that, they'll share it. Mm. So that they're, they're playing up the the long seed. It, and I really like that. It's it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really good. interesting. It's, to see. it's played dividends, so that's good. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's worked. Big big thumbs up today, really. So mm. we I was speaking to Chris earlier, and when we've seen all these stats come in, and you know, it's it's really promising for us. And Daya seems to be one of those trigger breweries that people like. You know, like Verdant. What 
would you think in terms of brewery visits would be like the most interesting thing for the most amount of people what so, bre- yeah what brews do you want to see but it's not yeah. even that it's not even that what brews you want to see because we're all geeky about this what brews do you think people want to, to see? see i think it's that you know what's, <laughs> yeah, what's yeah, the yeah. what's the widest net for the least amount of shittery do you know what i mean it's like because mm. i'm thinking somewhere like thornbridge or you've got thornbridge is probably yes. that the craft net is that wide they they're stretching themselves pretty far you know and then you get people like siren craft i guess and and, 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 and buxton for example what's that brewery what is it because in my head the best breweries are you know people like track and overtone at the moment and rivington but they're not big in fact they're not even probably well known by but, but i think i think they've got the audience like possibly track, track rivington overtone i think those are the possibly. three that i've even got in, in my head at the time um these guys while we're here we may as well uh, th- th- this this was on purpose give them a quick pim because i had this beer last night and i fucking love it this it's is Wiper and True's Collie Dipper. Or K- 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 Dipper. Collie Dipper. Oh, it's a play on words. Um, I mean, yeah, we haven't had this yet, but their, their tap room is something to behold. Yes, you've, you've said you, you went there and it was like spick and span and white and shiny. It was like a autopsy room. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Except with Bob Peter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they weren't just cutting up bodies they were cutting up pizza <laughs> so yeah this has been on the shelves for, for a week or so but let's, let's... this is a great beer quick have a ronk I mean they can't ronk because they're not drinking it no but we can are we losing people is it, is it no it's cool. bit... no, I'm just... people are dropping off and it's quite acceptable because it is 10 o'clock um well, this is the this is the this is the fucking dark realm. This yeah. is this, we we didn't advertise this. This the is dark like, realm. You, you suddenly you, you're behind the fucking velvet ropes now. You're here, and there's nothing different other than you just get to spend more time. I, know, with I, us. Love, I love the fact <laughs> when I was like you know 21. In fact, when I'm I don't know, you know in my like early 30s, you know, we were going out at 10 o'clock. You know, <laughs> no intention of getting back by, until Sunday. Now it's like well, we're 10 o'clock. We're in the dark realm. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure your kids are in bed because it's got, gonna get wild. We got some replies actually. So Steve, a legend Steve said, keep at it, guys. You're knocking out great content. Fuck the stats, who cares about it? Uh, about XG. Expected goals. Um so his thing is uh, <laughs> expected goals. Expected goals. Uh Tartarus, Tiny Rebel, Brew York Beak. I'm not talking about favorites, I just think they'd be hits for different reasons. And I think that's the thing. I mean, he mentions there Tiny Rebel. Now, I have no interest in going to Tiny Rebel. Well, there's an interesting conversation. But it's like if if the audience was there. Um, me and you would have a discussion about those, I think. Um, Beak is very much, um, that's on a hit list. Beak is on a hit list. Love, love Beak. I think a lot of people do. There's, there's a, another couple of brews around. Tartarus. Tartarus around is another good one. North, North Brighton, and you know, around Lewis in particular, we've got Abyss and Abyss uh, Brewing. Yeah, yeah. And big Abyss, in my mind, are. I've only had two of their beers. The one's been good. One's been excellent. I've had their box through Bruiser. They're kind of that brew which aren't way, you know. But, no, they're good. They're good. But, but they are what, good. But what they are is characters who are intent on disrupting things, and I, I, I love them as people. I think one of the owners is a you know stand-up comedian, for example, is a nutter. We 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 had the pleasure of his company at Rivington Farm Fest in a few years back, and it was great. And we said really? we must go and see him. Uh, but... Legend, Legend Steve said Vault City. Now Vault City is a, a great show. Maybe Overturn and Vault City in one trip would be good. I think Vault Edinburgh, City, Scratch Glasgow. Edge. What's that? I think Vault City probably are that kind of Vault they, City are great. I mean, interest magnet, I guess. Yeah, because it's like how have they become the 
they're basically like public hype brewery because everyone, and I'm sure you guys know this, everyone, even if you don't really know beer, you know Vault City. And if it's not just because of that gate logo, it's because, you know, they do silly sour beers. And maybe you've, at Christmas, you got your gran to try a fucking session blackcurrant sour or something, asking her if it tastes like Ribena. Did you? I waterboarded mine, but yes, it falls into a theme. But you, you know what I mean? It's it's like it that there's something that everyone knows. So maybe Vault City is a is a really good, really good chat. I think Vault City is, yeah, it's one of those. It's it's weird, is it? Because I'm putting breweries now in. It, it, we have to put it through the lens of the people who watch this kind of content. But you know, wouldn't you get past Verdant and Daya? It's always what else is there? Because if you go somewhere like we mentioned Thornbridge, then you're getting almost too non craft or yeah. you're getting too commercial. It's like it's like we like pretentious musos, you know, well, I think who, who are into the cardiacs uh, and, and, and things, it's, things it's, like that. You, you basically the, the line that you're sitting on is craft beer people who watch YouTube. That's what you're sitting on because you like you. Your Thornbridge and that sort of stuff, and your Buxtons probably hold a lot of value. Mm. But are, is is that audience watching YouTube? But is it interesting Prob enough? Probably yeah, not. Yeah, no, it's, it's I mean, it'll probably be interesting, but it's just like I, I don't know if it sits along the same same lines. Scratch well, that. Exciting. Yeah, I, and and I think that's what it's all about. The whole and what I've found a lot since we've started doing the hops in focus videos. And also, we've done the like the opinion video at the beginning of the year, which is still like you know we, we need to do more of those style of videos. But those those videos are bringing an international audience, so we can't always necessarily focus on mm. stuff that's just entirely UK yeah. focused. Carl, good night, boys. Thanks for a fab evening. Can't wait to see you for the sesh in a few weeks. Thank Fresh you, dude. Night. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, the, the therapist. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. For sure. um, but no, you, you know what I mean? It's like we we need to also do things because we've got quite a few like international subscribers now, I'm not just from America. I'm talking like Scandinavia, and they're looking at the Hops and Focus videos. So we need to look at doing more of oh, that. No, it, it, yeah, uh, uh, under no illusion that what we're doing is wrong in any way, shape, or form. Mm. In fact, you know. I think we've got a good little thing going on here. The hops and focus, the, the stuff we'll be doing with the boys who are on tonight is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to that. My boys. Um, I think it's more the, the brewery visits I'm talking about. because Yeah. Because, you know, we've, we've cards on the table because you're all here, obviously. You know, we've gone down to very niche, loved by, you know, the industry brewers like Baron and people like that. But that doesn't bring in numbers. No, Baron does. Baron did. He did, but slowly. As soon as we put day right, it was fucking. You know. Yeah, no. And, yeah, and Verdant Fuck, everyone loves Verdant, don't they? Yeah, no, to be fair. I don't, I don't, we, we're talking small numbers, to be yeah, fair. But, the Samba group, the, again, is an issue. But. There's, there's, I mean, there, there, it, was, it was the Northern Bunk videos that bummed me out because they were the ones where I wanted them to do big numbers and they just. They that didn't, was weird. Didn't. Yeah, Hannah mentioned that actually the other night. And it, well, we're looking at the stats. It's like, well, you know, the moon didn't do much. Yeah, yeah. But the that's thing is, weird, isn't it? But the thing is, it, it, that thing is still evergreen content. People can still stumble across that and watch it. And obviously, you'd expect that the better Northern Monk do, the more people will search it. So it's 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 out there, isn't it? Yes. Um, Who? Here's, here's a question. It's probably not for now, but I think it's, it's a it's a good good show because I've I've had a, a conversation over the past couple of weeks, which has kind of reevaluated my brain a little bit. <clears throat> so, in this industry, and as lovers of craft beer, and you know, we're the ones who drink all this stuff all the time. Consistently, the best breweries are you know. Going to be our favourites, but there's the big boys. There's your Verdon, Sewer. I don't think anyone here would argue aren't amazing. Um, Daya, obviously, but you know, 
Um, I've always been raving about track as consistently, you know, one of the most underrated outside of this in the, the, this audience, underrated breweries in the country and consistently great. Recently, I've had a bunch of beers direct from Overtone. I love Overtone, by the way. But the last batch I've had from them have been nothing short of spectacular. I've had West Coast. I've had uh, Old Stouts, a couple of different dippers from various different hops. Um, stunning across the board. I don't think they put a foot wrong. So my question to you, boys, who are girls, obviously, who is tickling your tits in terms of amazing breweries? So while everyone <laughs> gathers their thoughts on that, um, Seabass said Double Barreled and Phantom in Reading would be worth coming out to. Which, to be fair, you've got two breweries, and Reading isn't that far from Wokingham. And it, it's all so the books. You've technically got four breweries there, which are all in, you know, very close proximity. Um, Steve said, "I thought Northern Monk were better." Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's two. Yeah, it's weird. So it just wasn't an appetite for that at all, was it? Um, what's that thing that Luke's saying there? Is that anything to do with the wrapper Viper? Looks like the same font. Jesus Christ! That's is that your sex toy, Luke? What's, what's, what, what are you, what, what's that a reference to? <laughs> but yeah, um, no, I think Beak, I think, are, are nailed on. We've got to do Beak. Oh, I I, we've got, we got to do Track. I think it might kill me if we don't do it. Track as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I did really want to do Tartarus, but like Tartarus kind of dropped off a bit after the first year. I don't know what... what what they're doing with Tartarus, but they're, they're they're still they're still doing their thing. They're you know? doing their thing, but I don't understand what's what's going on with them. Consistently wise, that I've had some cans which have been fucking rank. Sorry, just happened. So no, that's, that's fair enough. So, I mean, something's wrong with Tartarus at the moment. I don't know what it is. Um, Northern Stone Tim. No. Oh well, it's E seventeen, isn't it? You know what I'm saying. Andrew, a bit of a trek, but other world in Edinburgh do some spectacular mixed firm IPAs and what? Been there, been there, have you? Yeah. Oh man, that's got me. Yeah. That's got me thinking. Yeah, Edinburgh is great. We went to we, me and the boys went to Leith. Yeah, Leith's Edinburgh good. and Leith. Yeah, yeah. But other world, then. Where's where's that? Edinburgh. Yeah, but whereabouts? You're asking me to fuck my well, life, fucking hell. I'm usually drunk when I walk around Edinburgh. <laughs> it's it's there. It's, it's up the hill. <laughs> so, but what, what I mean is, is it central? Is it like, is it like uh, no, a place that we could be, be like, no, yeah. no, it's not, is it? No. The world isn't central. I don't know. I was there for three days. It was terrible. It's somewhere. I really enjoyed Leith, though. I thought Leith was an excellent little place. You didn't know the world on the way back from Leith to Edinburgh. But Leith to Edinburgh isn't actually that far. It's literally like we got in a taxi and it was it wasn't it wasn't that wasn't that far. Dal Keith. Oh bad violent movies, right? Yeah, mate, we 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 friend we mates with nothing bound. We know them very well. Thanks for thanks for listening. Yeah, Mad Violent in the movie said nothing bound. Best brewery in the Midlands. Did you guys try sizzle, what sizzle? in twenty twenty two? Is that a nothing bound beer? I'd be very surprised if it didn't. Other worlds is in Dark Heath. <clears throat> oh, okay. What's Sizzle? No idea. Maybe it's a beer. I went to Nothing Bound. Oh, nothing Bound. Other world. Fucking hell. I've had a drink now. Um, yeah. Why did, I, why did I go there? You're just you're just now old man shouting into the sky. That's what you why, why am I there? I, I've I lived there? a life. I've been there in something. <laughs> um Mr. Sizzle. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Outside, outside, outside of the Wolverhampton Civic Hall, Mr. Yeah. Sizzle in Canuck. <laughs> nah, outside the Wolverhampton Civic Hall, same guy. Just, just I know, rock, but rocks up in shifts. That's the famous one, right? 
Uh, Sizzle was one of nothing Ben's beer, uh, one of nothing Ben beer related to his friend. I don't, it, don't remember that. I don't remember Sizzle. I don't, I don't think I've had it. I'll, I'll double check. No, but yeah, we because that's the thing. Now we can check this out because we're untapped wankers. Um, we, we've uh, we've interviewed old Dave, and he used to uh, supply yeah. us. And we, we yeah, we know him. He's he's, he's a good egg. Dave, nothing bound. He's, he's a good chap. He's a legend. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's he's a brewery that will do definitely very well. I think Glasshouse are going to do definitely well. Like I'm trying to think of breweries that are out there right now they're gonna do just fine i think what you're gonna what you know well, this is interesting because because so we're, on a, posi- we're on a position right now where like breweries are gonna be fucking going to the wall T- 10 to the dozen pretty mm. much so th- there's gonna be breweries which, which are gonna be brewery tap rooms typically right they're gonna be selling products and sorry brewing products and selling products that's in the right area, that they're going to be the ones who aren't withholding to yeah. natural distribution, so they're going to keep it lean. They're going to just sell their shit. Glass cells are doing that pretty well, I think. Um, their cast stuff is getting momentum and hope you know, all power to them. So, I think Phantom are doing pretty well as well. You see them knocking around in, in Canada. Phantom, apparently, they've got a really good tap room, the well. tap room their, and their, their tap room yeah, is like it's apparently like a weird little ghost town, yeah. So, but the, the, yeah, people rock up to that, don't they? So, Polly's, uh, but I mean, Polly's in a tap room. Steve, Steve Power, Legend Steve. Polly's got a tap room. No, no, no they haven't. We, we discussed it in the last one. Uh, Andrew said, just notice the King is oh, album Andrew, in the background. Oh, you might want to join my other YouTube channel, which I have a star called uh, King Giz oh. and the Lizard Wizard. Um, enthusiast, enthusiast, planet.com. <laughs> yes, yes, I've, uh, I've been into it for about two <laughs> years. Planet King is got him in from recently as well. So are we going to see him actually in Wolverhampton? We're going to see him in Wolverhampton in so, May. Yeah, we we um, we 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 jizzed. <laughs> is that the word? Yeah. <laughs> jizz buddies, <laughs> J- jizz friends, or jizz jizz Kings. buddies. Um, um, yeah. we, we need to go to we need to go to Nottingham. Steve Powers just recommending Nottingham there. Now, oh, that yeah. for me, best beer city in the world. Uh, but, I mean, fuck it. Take a <laughs> take a breath, son. Did, did, <laughs> did I, just 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 relax a little did, bit. Did I say in the world? Yeah, I meant, I meant in the East Midlands, <laughs> <laughs> in Nottinghamshire. <laughs> Agree. Relax. Oh God, yeah, that nearly set me off for something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. this, this is getting this is getting a bit silly now. Um, we should, we should, we're going to set a cut off time for. <laughs> I think we're just getting pissed now. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to set a cut off time for two hours and. Mm. Should we set like five minutes? Let's give a five minute warning. Five minute warning. Well, two hours and five minutes. Two hours. And five minutes. <laughs> That's a long time. I don't know. Doing half past. Anyway, let's let's just go. Um, yeah, so we're going to go to a half past. You can still be here, or you don't need to be. But yeah. Let's let's talk nonsense. Um, what's your favourite band at the moment, and why should we listen to it with beer? Yeah, I mean, just just throw that shit, sort of shit. Out. We are slurring now, actually. This this, this drink along, you are. Turns out it works. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, one of the things that I really want to do when we go to uh, Glass House is. I think we really need to just make a point about going to the other breweries there. So we, we thought about the, 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 like the, there's quite Birmingham. a vibrant scene around um, the suburbs of Birmingham. So we, we'll probably go to Sturchley and we'll, we'll do Glass House, Rocky Winners, Attic, Middle Ground, maybe. Do some good stuff. And they've got Birmingham Brew Company. We were fine. No, but they're very trad, aren't they? But I went to with with Legend Steve. I went to um, Attic and Birmingham Brewery recently, and Birmingham Brewery. <laughs> I, fucking, I, I hate this because I love Attic. I really like Attic, but I really I preferred the Birmingham Brewing Tap Room. I just found it, especially because we had Maeve there. It just felt more easy to just be around and be in. 
It's a it, was, nice, it was more. It was more comfortable. It's a, I think it's yeah, a nice. It was, but you know, that's great for you as a parent. As yeah, a, I suppose, uh, if if you like, you you you. Standard. When, when, when I went with a bunch of my my friends, the, the last thing I wanted to see was a bunch of kids running around screaming. Yeah, making be, be, be a, beers off the table. So, but you you know what Maeve's like, and, and <laughs> she doesn't do that. But yeah. That's not what I meant. Um, <laughs> they're going to fight you. Know. Uh, so it's, Ma- it's not it's not the the uh, tap room I'd expect on that tour. Big Ev said gave the Kaleidoper a four point two five on untapped. Oh, she we never even said this. The Kaleidoper, yeah. So Wiper and True, which is the beer that we we're just drinking, great beer. Um, Mad Vinyl and Movies said Polly's have an unofficial tap room at Moldale House. Yeah, and they're in Wolves, and they'll be at Kingers too. So we'll see about Mad Vinyl and Movies. Yeah, buddy. I'll reach out. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll meet you. We'll... Reach out. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll go for a beer. That sounds like a plan. And Andrew said, seeing Cheek Face this weekend, they're great, but I can't recommend them <laughs> to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Why? That, that's that's basically most of my easy <laughs> choice at the moment. So yeah. So, so some um, my work colleagues, I had to go literally had to leave the house. I work, I work remotely, but I had to go to a thing on Monday. I had to go to Bedford, sexy place, Bedford. I had to go there for Lovely. a work thing, and I was wearing a Cardiax t shirt. And um, all the young developers said, said, Hey, guy, what's that on your t shirt? Who's that band? And I said, Hey, guy, it's, it's Cardiax. <laughs> And I said, are they any good? And I said, I can't recommend them. I'd rather you didn't listen to it. Nice. They're really nice. hard. You wouldn't like them. Nice. So, yeah. So oh, Cheek Face is similar to that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know Cheek Face. Okay, I'm going to say it's the same vibe. This this one is actually quite close to my heart, actually. So Simon Clark has said, just tuned in. What happened to the series Visiting 12 Pubs featuring in the calendar? Okay. That's a great question, and it's also a great source of, uh, I don't know the word, but... Ennui. Is, is that, it could be the word that I'm after. But essentially... I think it is. The calendar crawl, which is the thing that, that you're referring to, so in that, for those that don't know, we buy a calendar at the beginning of the year called Great British Pubs, and then it takes us... Um, we basically, whatever pub features that month, we go there. And we've done it three times now. We did it in 2016, 2019, and 2023. Yeah, that's right. 2016 and 2019, both of those times, I wrote blogs about them. And I, I wrote, like, humorous kind of just summaries of what we got up to, like a little highlights reel. And... It was always very popular because I think on top of the fact that, you know, you, you get the little report afterwards, just the whole novelty of knowing that people are going out doing a little mission and it's every month and people have got to do that and then they've, they've got to finish off in the year. People are very really happy with that and they're always like checking in going, even if they weren't interested in what we were like drinking or anything, they'd be like, you're all right. When when's your next trip? Where are you going with the calendar this month? And you you would always get that. And I thought when we did it, twenty twenty three, um, what would be cool because we've got the YouTube channel is that it would be cool to do a video blog about it as well. Which essentially, long story short, I've got all the footage for all of the journeys but only ended up editing three of them. Um, and that was basically just due to time. And it was it was due to time, the fact that there's, there's me and Paul. Paul very much sorts the breweries and the paperwork and all that side of things. And I sort the production aspect. And also, Paul wasn't really anything to do with the calendar crawl to start with. So it was that there isn't really anything that Paul could do to help me in that respect. So it was like a thing that I I took a bite 
that I basically couldn't chew. It was it was it was a legacy of a different vibe, and we didn't yeah. really know what Planet B TV was going to be. So as as it was going on, and I, I were filming at breweries and and going different places and doing other stuff as well to make sure we could get the content out. I I also had to look at, and I know that stats are bullshit. But when you're a growing YouTube channel, you also have to look at the stats and have to look at what people are coming back to the channel for and the the two or three videos that I'd done on the calendar crawl weren't with the sense that I also had to write the write the script, film it, edit it afterwards, it wasn't it kind of wasn't worth the time when I could have been spending the time on editing a video about nothing bound. Or a, or doing a taste along or something like that. So it was it was essentially the reason why it got cut short or cancelled was just based on that. And it's not because I fucking don't want to see that because I'd love to have had the time to fucking to to see that through. Yeah. And there was there was every single aspect that I tried to think of to make sure that I reef uh, like to, that I kind of did the calendar crawl all the way through. It, but it, it just didn't quite work. It was very, very clear as well that you were burning yourself out pretty hard about that because you've got to realise when you go away and film something, it's a thing away from your family, so it's a thing away from life, and then you, in particular, have got to edit it and set assemble it and you know make it a, a thing, but you know which is presentable to everyday life it, it doesn't work you know and we it's, were, it's difficult yeah yeah, uh, yeah. you know we, we we'd formulated at this point what planet beer tv was going to be it's been through iterations and don't do not get me wrong chris is the <laughs> the, the 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 kind of is he's the you know the source of this stuff and his thousands of ideas go through and the, the guys are you know a, a, a filmic genius and i'm gonna i'm gonna you know i'm gonna church you up a little bit here, chris yeah, you know, this, this, this is all you no, no, but, but it's but you have to crystallize what we're trying to do, you know. And that, yeah, yeah, ultimately, that. you couldn't do it, could you? You were trying to do that. Well, yeah, because oh, I mean, you committed, <laughs> and then you were trying to do what Palette TV was going to. Yeah, yeah, it, it, exactly. So, it was, it was, it, it's not just feasible. And I think the worst part was I felt that that was on a time schedule as yeah. well. I felt, you know, because it needs to be to be relevant, and you know. If it doesn't need to be, then I could still do it now because I've got, like I say, I've got the footage. We, we've got the footage to actually do it, but it also kind of, to me, feels like it's all, it, it's almost, um, I don't know, it's, you know, not not pointless because I don't want to say that word because that, that seems harsh. But, you yeah. know, it, it feels like it wouldn't necessarily be the best use of my time yeah. to, to cut those now. It doesn't have the same time scale that we're in and for what it's worth you know i was you know as a part of planet bt at the time watching those going i've no idea what this is but it's fucking entertaining and i loved it you know so it, but it was it was a thing over there and it, it was what chris and, and and you know the the legends that were johnny macro and steve power and everyone doing all those things so it wasn't our thing we're going to do now so we we just had to Separated out, right? For your own sanity. Yeah, I mean, like, like, like I mean, so, uh, see, Bass just said, I'll join you on the next one, on the next hooky one. <laughs> Absolutely, you're in the area. Um, Simon came back, and said, uh, totally understandable. Maybe we'll see the footage in another light. Yeah, and uh, that's the thing. I think it does feel like it needs a an ending, you know, and and I think maybe we'll. Because I've talked about this actually, and, and it was one of the things that we we talked about with Johnny Macro, where maybe we'll just do an episode where we just talk about the rest of the locations with a little interspersing of the footage of the places that we were at, just to tell the little anecdotes of while we were there. And so I don't think it's dead, and I I I, I think we can definitely do something with it, and because I, I don't want all that time to go to waste because it was, you know, a but, lot of time when you go away and if you are spending it, just filming stuff as well. But there was it, there was that thing between you formulating it and us, you know, me and other people being involved in some way. And we went out and did loads of stuff, loads of stuff. Man, I wish I could show you that. But it 
there's no narrative. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. There's breweries which you'll know or don't know, but what she did. But we can't do anything with it at this stage because it wasn't Planet Beer TV. It was us filming things for the, not for the sake of filming. Well, just yeah, we we're trying we to get wanted, things. We wanted to know what was. It was we're getting thing. content moving. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't until yeah. me and Chris just got together and fuck it. This is what we're gonna do. But but on that note though, I mean the the calendar crawl is definitely still something that we're. I mean, well, me, you've never done one, but I'm sure you would. But passionate on doing. And we don't do it every year. Obviously, we're not doing it this year. We probably won't do it next year. We've generally tended to do it like every second or third year. And we get the calendar and we just go out and follow that pub, whatever whatever that pub is that month. We go out and do it. And then we go out and check out the town nearby. And who knows, next time we'll be more equipped to knowing what needs to happen. You know, and and I I definitely will know what I can bite off and what I can chew. Well, I think which, we, I, which I didn't know. Well, I definitely think we year. should do, and this is just right. ideas formulating and germinating with people involved here, which the people are obviously on our you know our wavelength. We go to a town, and we go around your favourite breweries slash tap rooms, which are relevant because we're with Cheltenham, right? We have today a planet caravan, and, and we went went around Cheltenham. And there was oh, nothing there, really, except we found this amazing place. <laughs> found <laughs> like we discovered it. It's there. No, uh, t- tiny. What was it tiny? Uh, uh, weirdly, we bumped into a friend of ours who what said, his name? Tiny, "Tiny Daniel." Tiny Daniel. <laughs> tiny Daniel. He Thomas says, Daniel. "Have you not been to Planet Caravan? Go there." And it was fucking awesome. And so that triggered something with us that like you know can we do something around small towns that don't get much plaudits in terms of beer yeah i mean cheltenham definitely uh i mean basically just that one place like, they're doing a omnipolo I mean, tap yeah, takeover not, not, not to necessarily give them too much of a g but like they're doing a um Omnipolo tap takeover. 22 taps. Or 22, 22 taps? Oh, no, not 22 taps. 22 beers they're doing. And it's like, what the fuck? Are they looking forward to that sitting in their, <laughs> their lines? Mr. B's, yes, absolutely, 100% we talked about that. And I think that feels next. Yep, it feels like the, the, the next logical conclusion, to be fair. Yeah, 100%. Um, there's there's a weird thing going on between me and us, um, which is what we. I, I, I met a um, an American brewer um, over in Amsterdam, uh, Bottle Logic, who have since been imported over by Brew Exports. So they're getting a bit of traction now. They're getting a bit a bit sexy. I think, I think they're going to be like the new Treehouse or something over here. So we. It's kind of semi messaged him and saying, Would you up for something? And he said, Yeah. So I'd like to do an American version of that and see if we can bring some stuff over via brew export. But you know, this is all pie in the sky at the moment. Yeah, Who's who you know, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of, like, I'm trying to write a little a poll here. Um, I, I think what we should do. <laughs> <laughs> Change there you go. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> no, change that one to drink along surprise box or choose a brewery. How do you mean choose a brewery? Well, well let's get a brewery on. Yeah. And we get a brewery and we, we do this, but with a brewery. Yeah, I mean, we could absolutely do that. Yeah, yeah. I thought the the um, the whole thing about having the the catchphrases is that like next time we do this, the catchphrases will be different. So it won't necessarily fall along the same lines. It will be, do, I don't do, know. Do, do, you, do you know who else? Like, had well, fuck me. I wasn't expecting that. That could be a good one. But do you know who else had catchphrases? Jimmy Savile. Bill Crosby. Oh. Right. Well, I think we both know Cos- the Crosby. Buzz Crosby. <laughs> right. So <laughs> but there's a thousand things we're going to explore. I think, but what we'd like to do, I would like to do, name a, a town which hasn't got a good reputation of a beer, but has got great places to go drinking. 
Peterborough. And let's do it. Peterborough. And we'll, let's grab someone who knows something about it and we'll we'll go with them. Legend Steve's got to go and watch the Yankees now. What's that mean, Steve? <laughs> He goes, he goes and watches the baseball. He's off to New York. Um, Simon Clark, I think the checking out the town nearby and especially the local breweries was the big part of it. Yeah, no, yeah. that's is a thing. I joined late and I missed the majority of the stream, but I always enjoy these. Awesome. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for coming, Andrew. You, you probably caught the back end of um, four beers and a very big MP stout, to be fair. So. Five beers? That's not, that's four not beers so short. and then the MP stout. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So apologies if we're rambling. And, uh... I might eat wax now. Right. Yeah, we should we should wrap this up. Thank you very much for coming, guys. Um, it looks like, I mean, from the we've got 15 at the moment. Six are saying they'll buy again. No one's saying they won't buy. So we'll do something else. Let's do this again. Let's yeah. do different, Bless you. different. Bless you. We'll do something different. I'd love to interact with you a bit more in terms of well, fine town. Let's go somewhere. Sea bass. Are you still on? By the way, you might not be asleep. Luke is though. Legends. I said this last time. I said this last time. He's still here. Here you go. I know. I said. I know you won't be here on Saturday. <laughs> I don't think because you don't. You already work Sundays, don't you? But there's a hundred percent chance, or like eighty percent, be there on Saturday. Um, Hannah wants to come down on Saturday, so I think we're going to pop down to your place. There you go. Well, as ever, I'm not invited. Date date days, dude. Aren't you going? Aren't you going out with your family? Yeah, well, I mean, it's nice to be invited. It's putting the boots and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for coming. If you bought the beers, fantastic. If Love you didn't it. buy the beers, that's fine. Next time, we'll, I mean, we're going to do it again. So let's we'll, we'll do go. something else very soon. Good night. Bless Have you. a great time. Love you. Love you. Thanks Bye. for that. It was great. Bye. 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 Oh, oh. There I am. <laughs>